Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Pleasantly Positive show, where we take a look back on our week and just try to highlight some of the positive moments that left a good impact on us, uh, as well as we're going to be covering some good news stories in a segment that I like to call Pleasant... Oh, no. Positive Press. Sorry. I should really write down an intro instead of trying to remember it every time. Uh, I am your host, Savvy, and with me today, I have Dream Deaver, or Pete... Hello. Hello. How's it going? I'm good. How are you today? Doing good. <clears throat> good. Nice relaxed weekend. Was it? Was it for you? What? What? Did, what did your weekend look like? Uh, so my weekend looked like making plans to deeply clean my apartment and then abandoning those plans yesterday to <laughs> sit around and play video games instead. Uh, Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> what, what did you end up? What did you end up playing? Uh, well, so they gave away on on Epic. Uh, they gave away a Deus Ex game, Deus Ex oh, I saw, I saw Humankind that. or something like that, uh, or uh, Mankind Revolution or something like that. I have no idea. Um, so that was a sequel to another one that they had put out. So I bought the other one for $2 and I, I started playing it on on Steam. <clears throat> and it's, it has, it's pretty good. It has surprised me a little bit. I am mm -hmm. coming to terms a little bit and starting this week with playing games uh and this might sound a little pathetic but like on easy mode just because my attention span gets split yeah so quickly that i i will get bored with the game and i, I just want to barrel through it sometimes so i don't uh, think there's anything wrong with that i i i think it's like the classic games are meant to be played to have fun <laughs> yeah so if you yeah. have it on if, even if it's on like normal or hard and it's just like you're just not having fun because you keep dying or something like turn it right. on easy like it's 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 for your and it's for your experience not anybody else's yeah yeah i i agree and sometimes you just want like a little bit of a power <laughs> trip like you just want to go through and, and destroy uh without having to worry about the challenge of it so mm -hmm. that's why so, yeah, i love uh fun. i love crackdown games because of that i like i'm trying to think of a game where like i have a real power trip and like crackdown i just feel like a god going through the city <laughs> <laughs> Matt and I played uh, Crackdown three years ago, I think when it came to Game Pass. Um, mm -hmm. It was right when we started our, our channel and started like recording stuff. And I don't know if we recorded that full or if we have like a recording of that full playthrough, but uh, it was just a lot of us picking people up and throwing them into <laughs> other crowds of people. Yeah. Just bowling with humans. I have I have a lot of good memories. I haven't actually played three yet. I, I put it on my list of games to play, yeah. but I, I have a lot of hours in the first and second crackdown of just yeah, it's just doing the most random stuff, picking up cars and <laughs> yeah, them across yeah. the map. <laughs> I think those are free on Xbox now. Like when mm -hmm. you go through the list of free games, they just made them free, which is really cool. Yeah. I need um, to try them out at some point. Have you you haven't played the older ones? No, not at oh, all. Oh man, yeah, no. Uh, two is probably. I guess I haven't played three, so I can't speak. But uh, two is my favorite out of you know the first two that I've played so far. It's just a solid. It's just a solid game for when it came out. Yeah. Well, what does uh, your weekend look like? Oh dear, what did I do this weekend? Uh, it was mostly just playing games. <laughs> I think that's. I think that's all I really did. Uh, I worked both friday and saturday morning uh and then i think i just played games friday and last night of course uh so yeah just playing games with friends that's that's all i've done today i'm hoping after that's after the show that. i might go work out but we'll see we'll see how we'll see if that comes into fruition that's why i keep <laughs> i used to be really diligent about going to the gym and stuff like that and i have just dropped it over the past year it's been uh, every day i think i should go and then when i get off work i think no chance i'm going yeah home. it's like man i'm tired yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i i feel like i don't have an excuse but i feel like in my head i'm gonna take a shower after this and then i'll be like well i just showered i can't go get sweaty now even though i always shower before the gym anyway <laughs> yeah well heck yeah uh so i ask everybody this and even though you told me earlier uh what are you drinking this morning uh for your little morning pick me up I have a Dunkin' iced coffee. I went to, I live uh, across from a, a gas station and I, I went over there and I got a, a coffee and a a croissant, uh, this like Ooh. packaged croissant with strawberry and vanilla filling. And it was, it was good. I've never, was, like, I've never seen a stuffed croissant before now that I think about it. Oh no, I've had a chocolate croissant. Never mind. Like a, like a Starbucks okay. chocolate croissant. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was good. Not a huge croissant guy. I think they're too bready, but yeah. The the dough's not very uh it's not very sweet at all. It's like it's just it's just, it's just bread. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you uh, need like that... the sweet coating on it. Mm -hmm. The the coffee is it? Did I see? It's, is it just black? It's yeah. It's mocha. It's oh, okay. Uh, like okay. Sweet. I was about to say just a bottled black iced coffee. I don't know about that one. That that seems a bit rough. <laughs> yeah. No. I uh, I can't do black coffee because it like I don't terribly like hate the taste as it's going down, but the burps <laughs> later on will mm. I'm like like it's, it's yeah. I never just tasting thought, it afterwards. I never thought about if I get burpy after coffee after coffee i usually get sleepy and of course my stomach gets upset i don't know if i get burpy i'll have to keep an eye out as i'm as the show goes on if i get a little burpy <laughs> just no pros to drinking it at all sleepy no. and stomach upset no it, it it curves the the headache that i get from not drinking it <laughs> and that's about it okay is that what you're drinking this morning <laughs> yep yep just a uh, coffee with some powdered creamer and some sweet and low and I, I opted for uh, my usual instant coffee of late, Folgers. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, uh, if someone asked me to make a pot of coffee, I think I would be totally lost. I've only bought the, like, prepackaged really? kind. Yeah. Really? Okay. I can make it in, like, a, a Keurig, but I feel like that's not a not I, really an improvement. I hate Keurig coffee. I'm not going to lie. It's not even that it tastes bad. I just... I, I just like I you can't get I can't get the amount that I want and it's like well you can just you know set the setting to higher but it's like but the extraction's not the I used to work at a coffee place so <laughs> it bothers me but even but even then I'm sitting here using instant coffee right now so I can't really talk. <laughs> yeah, you you worked at Starbucks, right? Yep, yep. For a good that was my first job, actually, and it was fun. How long did you work there? Two and a half years yeah two, okay. and, two and a half years and then i also did another eight months at like a another location separate job but like but the first one was a starbucks inside of target and then years down the line a couple years down the line i also worked at a standalone for eight months so okay yeah oh, oh boy well uh are you uh you ready to get into our weekly look back of some positive moments yeah yeah Heck Excited. yeah. Uh, I think I'll start just because I don't have too much. It's it just a slow week more than it was a bad week. Uh, my, none of my, I didn't really get out much <laughs> this yeah. week. So I, I, I guess I'll start with some of mine. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so for my first one, uh, my cousin had a baby. Uh, and Congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah. I've never... Uh, I don't know, babies always scare me, especially when they're newborn and they're just they're just so tiny and they and like and i think more often than not just to make sure that they're good after they go to after they're they're born they go to like a they go to like a like a certain like care room and they get like they get a couple things attached to them just to make sure everything's all right and i, I hate i hate seeing that i remember seeing my nephew he was like attached to like all the different cords and everything and he was fine <laughs> like he was fine yeah. they're they're just like making sure that he's good but i'm just like i hate this i don't know <laughs> but it's, yeah yeah but it, it's it's so cool and uh they they named him frank uh and anytime that somebody like messages me about him uh i just i just say Frank. <laughs> like my like like my my uncle sent me a picture of him and i just replied with Frank, <laughs> and i I don't know. It just makes me happy. So I'm, I'm yeah, happy that's for my cousin. <laughs> so that's your second cousin then, right? Like that's the, yeah, the, I guess the, the hierarchy of cousins that goes second cousin. I guess that would be this might, this that feels so weird. I usually think of second cousins and as like, usually it's like a, like an upwards path kind of thing, but this is kind of extending down into the family tree. Yeah. It almost feels like a niece or nephew type situation because of the age gap. Mm -hmm. but the, the like but yeah it's i don't know yeah no that's I, i'm always confused by th that kind of like terminology like uh, like cousins twice removed and stuff like that I no that idea. i don't i have i don't understand that at all i've heard that a couple times i'm just like out of what <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do, so do, removed, do, like divorced twice and you got back together or like yeah or or is it is it twice removed from your main family 
bloodline? Oh, <laughs> you know what? That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there are two s separations, kind of. Maybe so. It, like my uncles. Yeah, I don't know. That's beyond me. The whole family tree yeah. thing is so beyond me. My my grandma does like the genealogy ancestry.com stuff she'll be on there like eight hours a day like full-time job <laughs> type of stuff <laughs> yeah yeah when people get into that stuff they really get into it mm -hmm. um yeah, genealogy was a big part of the like my, my family did a lot of genealogy when we were growing up um and i haven't really seen that much of it uh, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm interested in it every once in a while my grandma will like get on a kick where like she'll drop it for a year, then she'll pick it up for a few months, and so any phone call that you have with her, she's like, "I was just finding out that, you know, we're we're related to John F. Kennedy through twenty different cousins," and <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay, that's pretty neat." And uh, I think that I'm related to Booker T. Washington. Uh, I I believe I remember my grandma saying that. Uh, again, that that could be hearsay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I remember her saying that, and I that and that's why she took me to the in Virginia. There's like a Booker T. Washington, uh, like state, not a park, but it's like a like Booker, Booker T. Washington's home. It's it's just like a little uh, I don't know what to call it, but I don't know what to call it. But he's it's it's like it's just where Booker T. Washington grew up. <laughs> okay, like a, yeah. like an estate. Kinda. Yeah, kind of, but it, but it's not really an estate because slavery but yeah <laughs> oh, sure. yeah um yeah. that's awesome that's that's some cool history I don't, I don't think we have any like famous people in our in our lineage uh, i know sure that somewhere you might have yeah may, maybe like somewhere deep deep in there it's eight uh, times removed <laughs> <laughs> somewhere. there's a uh, like a pencil company in germany that we're slightly related to i think like there's a big we have Paper Mate. Apparently, Germany has Faber. Uh, Faber? That's a cool name. Yeah. I, I can't confirm or deny any of that, though. It's, it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I'm hearing mm -hmm. from family yeah. members. I don't know how, I don't know how like, trustworthy the genealogy stuff goes past, like, like after, I feel like, after, like, my great-granddad or great-great-granddad, after, like, when you go past that i'm like how like how sure are, are we yeah yeah is this how much of this is guesswork uh-huh yeah yeah um well heck yeah uh for for my for my second moment is i got a new stuffed fish i know i'm really reaching to the bottom of the of the barrel here but i got a <laughs> i got a stuffed fish for any of the listeners, I'm holding I'm holding him up to the camera right now. Uh, and I had my my Twitch chat the other night name him, and his name is Tooney. <laughs> Tooney okay, I see, yeah, I saw that in your Twitch title uh, from yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Where'd you get it? Uh, yeah, so there's a little bit of a backstory with it, which is why I wanted to bring it up. Is uh, at my mom's job, she works at like a medical office, um, and they've had this fish there just chilling on a shelf for years, and. Anytime that I come into her work, I just, I, I usually help them around the office with like really small stuff when I'm in there and <clears throat> I'll just like, I'll see it and I'll just pick it up and just, I'll just start like not playing with it, but just kind of just uh, mess it around with it. And then I'll put it back where it's at. And so one day I asked my, uh, my mom's boss, I was like, can I, can I just take this? Like, I don't think it belongs to anybody here and I'm, I'm clearly getting enjoyment out of it. So <laughs> yeah, can I give this thing a home. Yeah, and she was she was like, uh, yeah, please. I hate having random crap around the office." So, she let me have it, and I'm like, "Cool." <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I had like grand, like a grand vision that I could take it wherever I go, and you know, put some put put pictures on Instagram, create its own Instagram profile, <laughs> and it could become a celebrity fish. Yeah, I don't. That's not gonna happen. But <laughs> most unassuming locations. Yeah. <laughs> hijacking my lap right now does, does she like to get in your lap a lot yeah she does she's she just likes attention she mm -hmm. uh she wants to play she, right now she's chewing on my arm hey knock it off um <laughs> she just yeah she uh everywhere i go she follows she's different than a lot of other cats that i've had that have been a little more like suave about mm -hmm. it but she's she's just kind of attached and, and needy um which is adorable I, yeah I, love that's, I think that. that's, that's, um, that's the best kind of cat 
<laughs> yeah, and she follows me. She stares at me like she is right now, and uh -huh. yeah, she's, she's pretty cute though. She's your little buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, my I have a my pine my cat pineapple. Uh, she used to be that way more when she was younger. She's still she's still lovey. Like every once in a while, she'll hop up in my lap, but she's pretty like leave me be. But I'll follow you to the bathroom, and then I want you to pet me for a few minutes before I want to leave, kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and like the door's closed, and I can hear her meowing off to the side. <laughs> but as soon as I as soon as I open it and I try to like pick her up and like put her, sit her down with me, she'll want to run off. She just wants to be in the vicinity. <laughs> She's like, leave that door open. I'll come in if I want. Yeah. Uh, uh, our bathroom doorknob is like, uh, pretty easy to like just turn. I guess it just doesn't have a lot of tension when it comes to turning and opening the door, and her, and she she's learned how to like reach up and every once in a while, you know, if I don't lock the door, she'll she'll open it. Like I'll be on, I'll be on the toilet or in the shower, and I'll, the door will just start creaking open, I'm, and I just see her little head just, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you could get away, huh? Yeah. Or like when I leave the door locked, I'll open it, and she'll just be sitting there like, why'd you lock the door, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh man but yeah so i got a new stuffed fish and the last one uh that i wanted to mention was uh i go to the same gas station every day and it's like it's not even like convenient for me to get to it's like one of the furthest gas stations from my house but it's very clean it's very nice and, what, and the more specific thing that i wanted to bring up is that everybody that works there is very wonderful uh and i i feel like i've had a lot of bad gas station experiences <laughs> oh yeah and sometimes it's with the staff or just what's happening around in the area but at this gas station like i like i love going to it because i always feel safe and everybody there is always really nice and welcoming and i always go to the same pump and they always know what pump i'm on and they're usually trying to guess the dollar amount that i'm putting on it <laughs> that's cool yeah you're like a you're a regular now and they're yeah they're like kind of getting a buddy buddy with you yeah a little bit and it, it's 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 just it's just nice. I don't know. Like they're just again, they're just all friendly in there. It's all it, it seems like they like their job at least, and yeah, it and it, it seems to it seems to just spread throughout the store, kind of thing. It's just it, it's clean. It's nice. I, I don't know. I like it. It's a good. It's a pleasant experience. I don't know if you ever heard of Cumberland Farms. I know there's not too many in your region, so without that, doxing you, <laughs> that might sound familiar. But I might also be mixing it up with a a song called Cumberland Gap that I'm thinking of. I don't know if I'm mixing those two up. Uh, probably. <laughs> yeah, I there. I know there's where you are. I know there's not any. They're more. They're more in my region, and then also up in like New England, kind of thing. Okay. So, yeah. well, we are getting a Wawa soon. Uh, Ooh. Which is fun. Yeah. So too... battle of the sheets and Wawa over here. <laughs> yeah, they're too. Wawas are too busy. We just got a new Wawa down the road, put in, and as much as I like it, it's there's just too much going on, and they've put and when I'm getting gas, they put this really awkward like kiosk right in front of the registers and Ooh. and so but and it looks nice but it makes it awkward to know where i need to stand in order to be in line and i can see that other people are also like do i get on the other side of the kiosk or do i get on this side yeah and that's weird it caught it and it stresses me out <laughs> and so i just i just get up going to the cumberland that's that's a little bit further instead just because uh yeah Gotcha. So on the like sheets Wawa war, you're kind of like neither Cumberland Falls or Cumberland Farms. Yeah. If, if, yeah, if we're talking, if I have those, if I have those three options, Cumberland, if I only have like the Wawa or the sheets, uh, the only sheets I, I, I'll, I've, I, you know, I'll be honest. I haven't like, like it comes like, like the food and the drinks. I haven't been to too many Wawa's as compared to sheets. So Okay. I would have I would have to give it the sheets, but I know a Wawa they're usually nicer on the inside. I won't lie, but I've just never gotten anything special from a Wawa yet. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm I'm interested to see because when I went to school, so many people that I went to school with, even though it was a school in Virginia, they were from New Jersey. Hmm. That mm -hmm. school just attracted people from New Jersey and Pennsylvania for some reason, and I always yeah. wanted to know like how did you find out about this school? Um, but. 
they were all like, oh, Wawa is so much better than Sheets. It's so much better. Their food is so much better. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how could that possibly be true? Like, I don't, like the food would have to, uh, not that Sheets food is like fantastic or anything like that, but I can't imagine that Wawa food is any better. Yeah, I feel like it's same quality kind of like, yeah. just like, just like setup and everything. But I, I'm just speaking from visual. I've never again tasted i've tasted sheets food plenty of times i've had plenty of late night sheet runs especially before covid when they were open like they had the the kitchen section open all day i know sometimes they don't certain certain locations don't always do the all day kitchen now <clears throat> uh but like when i'm thing for the employees oh yeah i'm give sure them, give them a break <laughs> yeah uh but i can't say going into the wawa the food does look and smell good and they seem to have more options than sheets Mm, okay at least from what i remember it's been a while since i've been in the sheets so it's been it's been a year or two several years ago i was living off of sheets like dollar hot dogs like they're two for one <laughs> uh -huh. my budget was just super tight and uh, i would get those hot dogs like before and after work constantly a little yeah. burned out on hot dogs after that but <clears throat> i was a sheet shake kind of guy i, I love their uh, they had like a cookies and cream shake that was really good mm. yeah, I do yeah i do i do remember that I always had I a got a experience with that. Fluffernutter shake for a little bit. Fluffernutter? Really What's in that? Hey, peanut butter and marshmallow, I think. And uh, mm. maybe like vanilla ice cream. That sounds good in a shake. Mm. Yeah. Now I'm going to have to go like find somewhere that does like a peanut butter marshmallow shake because that sounds really I, good. I think Sheet still has it. I could be wrong. Uh, I don't have any I haven't down gotten here in Florida. Long. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, if there is a Sheets around here, I, I don't know where it is. I'll, I'll ship you one in a yeah, box. Yeah, just post it. <laughs> yeah. We uh we have a Bucky's down here, which have you ever mm. heard of that? I think I have. Is that like a full grocery store? I don't know. Or am I <laughs> it's, thinking it's of like, like this. Buckeyes? You might be. Uh, I don't know. I've never heard of that either. But right, I don't but, know what I'm thinking. But Bucky's, it's it has like a there's like a beaver as their logo, and it's it's supposed to be like the largest gas station in like the U S. Like I know some have like 200 pumps when you go to them, and there and there are these like giant buildings that yeah I'm sure they could probably fit a grocery store in there. So that that probably is what they do. <laughs> But it's like it's like this cultural phenomenon down here where like people are like they got their Bucky shirts. And they got their Bucky pencils and pens. Like they're just grabbing like Bucky tumblers. It's kind of yeah. like it's kind of like the hype for like you would see for a Wawa, and then scale that to like ten. <laughs> okay, I feel like I am thinking of the same thing then, but I just mm -hmm. had no idea what it was. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know yeah, it's like but... pretty popular in Texas, and we just got one within like the last year around here. It's like thirty minutes north, but close enough. <laughs> Two hundred pumps. That sounds crazy. Yeah, they must have a giant fuel reservoir under underneath <laughs> to support that. Oh boy, probably yeah. I could, I, two hundred could be a reach, but it's definitely more than I want to say fifty. They, I okay. mean, they have they have a lot of pumps. I know that. <laughs> Lord, yeah, that's crazy. I guess in a, in a busy like area like Florida probably has, um, you would need that up yeah. here they would go fairly like unused i guess True. although when she on in july last year i think they they went to like a dollar 76 or something like that a dollar 77 for gas for oh, july 4th i wish um, <laughs> i wish got, it was slammed i mean they were oh, back to sure. the road i i would have took advantage of that because gas around here has been like 350 360 hovering lately and ugh, yeah it's no go <clears throat> but but yeah that i think that that concludes my my weekly look back <laughs> the yeah. that was a gas, pretty good week the the cumberland farm gas station yeah it was a, a solid it was a solid week yeah not too much yeah. not too much went off a routine you know so yeah that's good we can we can cool. hop in we can hop into yours now if you're if you're ready Okay, um, so I did have a, I had a big, this is good timing because I had a big development happen uh, this week. Um, <clears throat> so for the past year uh, at work, I'm on a team of two, basically. Um, 
I, a year ago, my supervisor left. Uh, so the team of two, it's a, I, I do um, grant writing and uh, there are two of us writers that are staffed and my supervisor, who was the, the senior grant writer, left. And so I moved up into her position. Uh, and for a year, we've been looking to fill the lower position. So I've been largely doing the bulk of that work. We cr contracted out some help, some like part-time help for it. Mm -hmm. But it's been just an agonizing year of, of being super busy and, and being kind of overwhelmed and that kind of stuff. To yep. the point where like I've been uncharacteristically like aggressive at work and unhappy and all that kind of stuff. So finally we filled that position uh, and they they started not this past week, but the week before. But the bulk of their work has been in, in our work like happening together has been happening this week. Mm -hmm. And it's been just so nice having like assistance already yeah. Um, yeah. with with the workload uh like the, to the point where two people like around the office have have made unsolicited comments about how i'm like walking different like i'm i'm just a little more loose and not so yeah. not so tense and all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i would like leave work and my chest would be like knitted if you know that feeling of just like being so overwhelmed and being like, how am I possibly going to get this stuff done? Mm -hmm. um, yep. So, so well, yeah, it's been nice. Could, uh, congratulations, even though you didn't get the job, technically. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but either way, yeah, that, that's that's wonderful. I'm happy for you. Yeah, it's nice. The, ser the search is finally over. I mean, uh, hopefully, as long as she doesn't, you know, as long as we don't scare her off. Yeah. Are you, are you trying to be, like, gentle? Like, are, are you doing the training for it? Yeah, I am trying to. There, there are some elements that are a little bit out of my control. Um, mm -hmm. That are diff that can be a little bit difficult. But I've had like pretty frank like conversations with her about about how some of that goes, and uh, so it's been good. She doesn't seem to be like overwhelmed or anything. In fact, she is she is on the ball more than more than I expected. Like when I first started. I didn't know anything about grant writing, and so I was, uh, it took me maybe two to three weeks to kind of get on the ball and, and figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and by that point, I was kind of like saying to my supervisor, like, can I have something tangible to, to work on? Like, can I start one? Um, yeah. But for her first week, she started writing some and putting them together. And in fact, found, like we do, we have to do kind of like grant prospecting, try and find new opportunities to bring new funding in. Mm -hmm. um and she found one on her own and applied for it nice. uh which is which is awesome yeah she's killing yeah, it already initiative yeah well heck yeah i'm glad that i'm glad that weight has been lifted off your shoulders a little bit and yeah. that that's that's wonderful congratulations it's a massive relief thank you yeah yeah <laughs> it's um the, definitely the happiest part of the week yeah so like would you say uh in terms of like you like so i imagine your workload has just kind of decreased a lot in terms of just like kind of what's on like what's on your plate well so far it's increased a little bit just in terms of like uh helping her out and and getting her kind of up to speed with certain things um and and we're starting to be i mean before over the past year we've we're, I guess I'll go before that. Uh, my predecessor and I always checked each other's work. Didn't matter how long we had been working together or how long either of us had been there. We just did a double check review on any grants before they went out mm -hmm. um, to make sure that the data was accurate and all that kind of stuff. And that we had packed it with everything that we needed to pack it with in terms of information. Uh, that is, start I abandoned that over the past year just because to have anybody else uh, review it would have taken up so much time mm -hmm. and so I've just been doing them on my own so well, I, we're at the point at this point it's a lot of it's still some review and that kind of stuff before they're going out which is slowing things down in a way but at the same time because it's all hands on deck it's it's still moving at a pretty good pace 
Okay. So uh, the workload has hasn't decreased yet, but but you got help with that workload now, kind of. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And <laughs> as time goes, as we kind of work out our efficiencies, it will will be um, it'll be better. Good. Good. Yeah. Congratulations. So that's good. Um, second exciting thing, uh, not to get too self promotiony. No, nope, um, do it. But as as you know, uh, <laughs> Matt uh, slash Aerodactyl and I have our channel. Mm -hmm. um, we've been working on uh, a new mascot. I won't give too much information here because we haven't we haven't released it yet. But uh, we've been working on a new mascot or a mascot for our channel. Yeah. And we just ordered emotes for it this this week, nice. uh, which is very exciting. We don't have any emotes yet, so we got those back. Um, uh, incrementally across the week we finally got some yesterday that i had to like wrestle out of one of the <laughs> creators that we we contracted some people out on, on fiverr for it yeah um and yeah got those back and that's that's really exciting so no yeah that's just, awesome just a chance to put those on the channel and and be able to kind of debut that is is going to be really cool you so you're doing like a full rollout with the mascot and the emotes. You said you were working on a mascot. Did y'all like were y'all designing it, or did you kind of like get an idea and then source it to like Fiverr? Yeah. So mutually, like we kind of we got on and, and just kind of discussed what we wanted, what our vision for it it was, and and came upon like a kind of a mutual vision, and then uh, took that to Fiverr and and gave gave them kind of a source image and said we're we're looking at this and we want this kind of style and and uh let them run with it and they created something that we were both happy with so sweet heck yeah have, yeah. have you ever had I any mean, bad experiences on fiverr this week was the only one where i felt <laughs> like it was nearing a bad experience um and to be fair i mean to be to be critical of myself i'm always a little over suspicious of of certain things so like I may have been unfairly suspicious of the motivations of this creator uh, mm -hmm. and not not looking critically enough at how we could have helped the situation. But uh, so we ordered five emotes from someone. And uh, the way that we did it, we did it incorrectly, apparently. Uh, I went and I actually looked this morning to verify that I that there was this option available that we had just skipped over a mm -hmm. instead of ordering a package of five and giving them se seven days to work on those five emotes we ordered five individual emotes at two days each so mm -hmm. they only had two days to <clears throat> prepare the the five um which sucks but yeah. the way that they handled that was to send us a note that basically said you owe me twenty dollars and I was oh. just immediately, I was like, no, what? Yeah, yeah. This is your pay scale. Like, what are you talking about? Um, and Matt was a little, uh, he was a little more understanding and a little more open to, oh, we should have done this in a different way. Let's find a way to like compromise with him. Mm -hmm. While I was in the gear of this guy's doing something scummy. Let me figure, like, I want to figure out what he's doing that's wrong. Yeah. Um, which was not correct. We had definitely done that in the, in, in the wrong way. I do. I will say that he continued to kind of hand, like. Uh, I'm I'm missing the phrase, but he he doubled down basically on on what he was trying to get us to do, which was essentially like either go onto a private discussion with him so that he could co mark the order as complete without having delivered us the stuff, but still give himself time to do it. I see. Uh -huh. uh, or pay us $20, which I'm guessing was the the fee he would tack on for missing the deadline. I, mm. I don't know how all of that works, but it was, he ended up creating them and sending us a watermarked screenshot of it and still trying to get us to go into a private conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and at that point I was like, just send it to us so we can, we can mark the, so it wasn't like, it was a mutually bad uh, situation. Um, mm -hmm on both sides so well a little lesson like... for myself to, to not be quite so suspicious of people but it was still i feel like it's the ideal. nature 
of the site on Fiverr because you have <clears throat> you have like these people that are like all super verified five stars with like two hundred reviews or two thousand reviews, and then and then you got these smaller creators that <clears throat> you know they got nice work, a nice deal on the like on the price and stuff, but it's kind of it's kind of like is this like ske- i just feel like the the nature of the site does have like a little little sketchiness to it even even if the people mean well it's just like how do you know who and what to trust kind of yeah. thing like i've had a hard time <clears throat> in the past trying to like find like an emote maker and one that i trust and luckily i have landed on one that i really like but <clears throat> even when i'm looking at other graphics i'm like oh this looks cool but they only have like two reviews <laughs> like how am i supposed to trust them and they could just be a genuine you know cool someone cool trying cat. to start yeah yeah. yeah, and then, but of course, and then once you get that tension, especially with like the price, then you're kind of like, "Ooh, am I being haggled here, or did I, or am I missing something?" <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. And if you're not familiar with the platform and and all the different like intricacies of of how it works, then it can seem like someone's trying to pull the wool over your eyes a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, that's probably a really rare case and situation. I, I'm sure. I but- tried to do work on upwork which is similar to fiverr like years ago and it is really hard to get started and to like break into it i mean you have to do you pretty much have to do a lot of like beginning work for very little reward before you'll get enough positive reviews to make an impact yeah yeah i've i remember when i was looking at like how can i make money at home (laughs) i remember i remember i remember looking at upwork and I feel like the barrier to entry just seemed a little, a little, a little rough. And then like, I was like, okay, well, you know, I know how to do these things and I'd love to do these things. And I have like, when I was looking in the, like the marketplace of like the subject that I was interested, uh, there's already like Titans in that field. And I'm like, well, how am I going to compete with, <laughs> with these people? <laughs> yeah. Like what, how you're right. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the issue is that they could just go to someone who's already established. Why go to someone who's, who's not and then and that not. means i mean that usually means you lower your price but then and then right, that's yeah. when you t- that's when you teeter on the line like is it worth it the time that i'm putting into this now <laughs> exactly yeah and i'm sure people run into the same issue on fiverr a lot of the artists and just all the different they have so many different like options to choose from <laughs> on fiverr in yeah. terms of just things you want to do and things you want done yeah i mean we uh and looking <laughs> at ours i we knew so I had ordered some emotes for us like uh, months back um, mm-hmm. and they were too like chibi for us yeah. to be really happy with them. And I should have like noted that what, what I did was uh, like when I ordered them, I sent a note with it that basically said like, please don't do any kind of like pixel art just because I feel like that's so played out in terms of streamer stuff. Yeah, uh, like I wanted to avoid anything like kind of video game related, I guess for some reason I don't know what I was trying to do. Yeah. Um, it would they, be unique. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so they came back really like cartoonish and and, and cutesy. Uh, like we look like toddlers. Yeah, yeah. That, they were, they were that, well that is the running that is the running theme for a lot of streamer emotes is the cute little chibi. I mean, I have my own. They're of my cat, but they're still the kind of you know eyes bigger than the head cute little you know <laughs> yeah yeah it's, uh yeah and that just didn't seem the the only way that i feel like we would pull that off and it's still kind of a consideration for us would be to lean into the cutesiness but have them doing like vulgar and obscene <laughs> things at the yeah, same time yeah. that might still be on the table that, uh, that could be an interesting take on on some chibi emotes i like that <laughs> yeah but we got we, as part of the so when we did the emotes this past week we reached out to three different creators and for one of them we had them make our cats uh mm-hmm. same, same way so i am excited Sweet. uh just as a side note um dragon's dogma 2 comes out this week mm-hmm. i have uh, no idea what I, that is <laughs> uh, and, and dragon's dogma 1 is a really fun underrated uh capcom like not skyrim like but kind of skyrim like like it's a fantasy or open world kind of wandering around and they're like fantasy creatures and stuff like that and you get quests and blah 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 um okay. but, it, but it's uh, it feels like a more scaled down version of skyrim like the first one does a little more bare bones uh, what's in it terms on of depth it should be on everything uh, okay. I, it was originally a playstation 3 game i think i can't remember if it came to xbox but um 
But yeah, it's really good. So the second one's coming out. The first one, they didn't give the creator full control, but the second one they have, and apparently it's a huge world. Uh, but the character creator just came out, and Matt is, ha has created me uh, in Fallout for his Fallout playthrough that he's doing right now. <laughs> oh, I've never, I haven't seen the character. It's you? Like, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> uh, it's the main character. Um, and so I think I'm going to do, for Dragon's Dogma, you, you create not only yourself, but you create what's called a pawn. And they're just a, like a character that runs around with you. <laughs> and for this one, they're introducing a uh, a new like. Are you familiar with Skyrim? Did you play a lot of? Oh, that? I love yeah, I love Skyrim. Okay. I have yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there's a new race in this one that's basically Khajiit. Um, Best race so, in Skyrim, Khajiit. I always <laughs> play Khajiit. I don't think I've ever played anything else. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna do Matt as the main character uh, and uh, his cat Atari as as his pawn like a yeah. boss sorry uh so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that i love that okay uh, yeah. it's dragon's dogma 2 yes yeah okay and when, when did you say when it was out. releasing you said sorry i think it's the 22nd is okay. that friday okay i might have to i might have to look into that i've been trying to get into more games so because i i'm sure you're aware i play a lot of the same competitive sh like shooters and rocket league and as yeah. much as I, as much as I love them, it gets a little old, and so I've been looking for more games to kind of pick up and see if they'll <clears throat> if they'll be the one to to catch me. So, <laughs> yeah, so you like Skyrim a lot, so you don't you don't mind like single player games? No, I love a good single player game. I I want to find a good single player game to get lost in again. I was talking to some friends about that uh, last week, how I just like I want another Red Dead fallout yeah. kind of game to just suck me into it god of war like i wish i wish ragnarok would come to pc already because i would i would hop on that in, in an instant <laughs> yeah that's how i feel about spider-man 2 oh, i wish man, they could just yeah, start putting that games. stuff on pc just put it right on there you're good so many so much money from sales i, I was about to say like I, I feel like it's just a loss if you're not doing it yeah you know like, yeah. like sure you'll have the anticipation but i feel like people might just get played like oh you know i've already seen the gameplay over the past year and a half now so why would i play it kind yeah. of thing but if you put it on pc i mean you're gonna have everybody on your playstation they're gonna buy it whether it's a playstation exclusive or not the spider-man games those those kinds of games or god of yeah. war they're gonna buy it so just open the market up to us already while the hype is still there for the game that's my personal yeah. opinion on it but i think a lot of that some of that too is like for some reason, for some babyish reason, they get back backlash for for doing that, for op like putting games on different platforms. Like when Xbox announced <laughs> that Sea of Thieves was coming to PlayStation, apparently some big Xbox like streamers and stuff like that were like, "Well, we're done with Xbox," which is like, "Okay, brat, like sure, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> you're a gatekeeping loser, like making sure that none of, no people on PlayStation can play I this like awesome." like yeah i feel like it's just more people to play with more people in sea of thieves it's more people to shit on like <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you got you got some newbies that never played the game you could sink all of them i, I don't know i feel like i feel like the more people playing the better <clears throat> yeah I and, think I, so and, I go, and that goes to any game i i feel like i'm definitely like done with the whole idea of exclusivity like it's sure yeah. like sure i love the fact that halo is an xbox title but i mean it's already on pc at this point i think there's talks about bringing it to the switch now and and everything so like i at the end of the day i feel like it, it's, just, it's just a benefit like i just want us all to be gamers <laughs> yeah yeah we have to unite as gamers yeah and it and i'm actually in a sea of thieves community and a lot of the a lot of the talk in the community has actually been positive for just from what i've seen I'm like i'm on a i'm on a facebook sea of thieves page and from for the most part most people are like yeah i can't like i can't wait to uh <laughs> i can't wait to you know crap on some playstation noobs and see it thieves and the, and the same yeah. with hell divers is hell divers isn't on xbox yet i don't yeah, think yeah. or or it's about to and a lot of the a lot of the posts are like we need our xbox brothers right now we need help we need we need help <laughs> with securing freedom kind of thing yeah <laughs> that game looks awesome uh and uh but there are so many like the battlefront collection came out this week and now dragon's dogma is, too, is coming out and i'm like the I'm already collection received at... a lot of hate yeah because well, they have yeah. like two servers up or something like that for like the <laughs> for everybody that bought it i saw a screenshot and... on reddit last night for the pc players and there were six active people playing on steam that's was, that's not like, good they, they destroyed their uh 
their fan base by doing that like mm -hmm. somebody else was like hey there's a perfectly workable uh modern star wars battlefront game that we can all switch to and they were like oh we've gone full circle now the originals are shit yeah. and we're back to like playing back the to the yeah 2017 yeah which they're, they we're are good off. Yeah, oh yeah, Dob, Dob and I have we've we played we've played uh we've played some matches on there and it's all it's always a good crazy time. Yeah. And um, I grew up on the original Battlefront game. Uh, I used to on the on the PlayStation Two. I used to just spend hours on uh, not Hoth. Uh, what where where's where where's the where's Princess Amidala? What's what's the name of her home planet? Uh. uh um alderaan is it alderaan? Alder alderaan yeah i think uh or no not Al no naboo naboo i'm thinking naboo. okay yeah um yeah it's like the, it's like the drones versus the i guess it's the republic uh or the droid the drones the droids the droids versus the republic on naboo Star Wars fans right now are like <laughs> <laughs> um yeah yeah i uh i loved that uh that game it was a lot of fun matt matt brought something uh up recently because we were about to get it, and he was like, he reminded me of the Bespin map, which I loved that Bespin map when mm -hmm. when I was playing it originally. So, um, so yeah, that was that was my, uh, I think that was my main map. I can't remember the one that I there was the one that had the Sarlacc pit. Uh, that one was great because not only not only did, were you fighting the Empire, but you were also fighting. Uh, the, the what's the what's the little dudes what are their what's their names i can't remember all of a sudden the, 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 Tus like tuscan, the tuscan the tuscan raiders is, oh, okay yeah. is, is that is that right the jawas the jawas are the ones with the like hood on and you can see their little yellow eyes oh uh, maybe it is maybe it is jawas i i there might have been i feel like was there both was there was there jawas and tuscans in it jawas uh, am, I, am i saying that right tuscans yeah tuscan raiders yeah yeah I think it had both. I think it had Jaw. I think it could be, or not you, but I think there was there was Jawas and Tuscan Raiders on that one map. I think. I think you're right. I think I, you might. Are you talking about the most Eisley map? I I I, 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 the, I, uh, I couldn't give you names, but it's it's the original okay. Battlefront, and the, it had the, it was the same map that had the Sarlacc pit in the center of the map, okay. and yeah, I just I just remember that map being a lot of fun, as well as like the Sky City one where you could like fall off and it's just ocean down below and it's raining yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that just... one is, is so moody and like fun chucking concussion grenades and just watching the the hero of the map just go fly off <laughs> off the map <laughs> <laughs> if you uh apparently there's an achievement you can get in the new uh collection if you hit if you explode a hero off of the map on that level you get an achievement um okay which is which is cool yeah uh if you have the game, do you ever play VR? Are you a VR fan at all? Uh, I don't have VR, but I've played a handful of VR games. I want to. Uh, it's okay. just, it's just, it just hasn't been in my budget. But I've played like yeah, I've played Beat Saber, VR Chat, and uh, Half Life Alex. Um, I've played, I've played all those in VR. I haven't, I don't think I've touched any other VR games, unfortunately. Gotcha. And um, if you ever pick it up in Contractors, the game Contractors. Mm -hmm. that someone ha you can just join servers that are are star wars star wars battlefront one and two like the originals uh just maps from that and you get the <clears throat> guns from it and it's it's a lot of fun to be like in okay. vr in those old maps fun there's stuff. a there's a i think it's it might be blade or blade and sorcery blade or sorcery like uh there's it's either that or like another game that's like that where you can like i think download mods that like you have a lightsaber and force powers yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love I love watching the clips of people just you know ch throwing their lightsabers, using the force, bringing the lightsaber yeah. back, and I, I love I love watching those gameplays. Yeah, those like TikToks. It's just music, and they're like spinning around and doing crazy <laughs> stuff on those maps. Yeah. Oh I yeah, like they're where they got the, like the Spider Man web slingers. Yeah, they're, uh, yeah, yeah. They're just swinging around. Yeah, that stuff is cool. <laughs> I like that. They hit them with like a frying pan in the face and stuff like that. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Or like, or they'll like shoot a frying pan into somebody's face. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do those like crazy trick shots. Yeah, that'd be fun to learn how to do. That would be. That would be. Yeah. No, I hope to get. I hope to get into VR soon. It is. Uh, the The cost of entry is is a lot. Mm -hmm. I know the quest kind of cuts down on that, but I want to be. I don't want to. I actually want to be like kind of locked in into the computer, which I know you could do like a Windows link, like a, like you can cord your quest into the PC. Uh, I know that's an option too, but. Yeah, I haven't tried that. I haven't. 
But do you mean like with a physical cord? I feel like yeah, there's a yeah. So like you could use the quest standalone, of course. And then there's also right. like a like, you can also like connect a cord to the quest to the PC. So like you could play games that maybe aren't on the quest. And like let's say you're in VR chat, and instead of saying you're a quest user, it'll say that you're just like a normal Steam VR user kind of thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's what I do for my uh, for mine. I have the. Uh first quest mm -hmm. i think um and i think on the second one you can just connect wirelessly um mm -hmm. but i'm not i'm not sure i would have to look that up and verify that i think mm -hmm. matt has the has the second one which i'm jealous of because they keep putting those freaking resident evil games Ooh. in vr like they put resident uh -huh. evil 4 the original version in vr but it was only available on the quest 2 and they didn't put it on any other platforms that made me jealous but that would be fun i think Whichever one is has like the biohazard DLC and village, I'd probably poop my pants <laughs> <It's> <laughs> playing. <laughs> Honestly, any scary game in VR, I think I would just, I would die. I don't know. Yeah. I couldn't imagine like playing Outlast in VR or something. Oh dear God, I, that would be terrible. I think that's a thing, isn't it? Outlast yeah, VR. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I think I think you're right. If if it's not an official thing, then I'm sure somebody has like modded it to be mm -hmm. VR. There are so many like f standard to VR mods out there now um, that I've been wanting to explore. The ones that I have tried haven't been perfect though. Like I tried a Fire Watch one, and it was it was a little weird. They have a hard time adjusting around like preset animations. Like if you're crawling over a log or something, mm -hmm. you kind of have to sit and watch the As character. <laughs> That, do that and then yeah. you zoom back into its head uh that's interesting stuff kind of it kind of takes you out of it a little bit yeah it kind of destroys that immersion which is what all, vr is all about mm -hmm. so other than that it, it just becomes kind of like this novelty like oh i can look around thing but. yeah well heck heck yeah a lot of yeah. a lot of a lot of game talk on that one. I I don't I'm sorry I don't even remember what the original uh what the original good news thing was on that one. <laughs> oh, I it was went, the uh, emotes. It was the emotes, emotes in the, in the yeah. mascot. Okay, wow, wow, we, we that really spiraled off, huh? <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I just kind of took us no. on a journey. Uh, no, to it's video okay. Games. No, it's um, good. Did you did you have more you wanted to share on that or like for your weekly uh, look back? I'll snowball into saying that and uh, in, uh, continuing kind of the video game talk, something that I'm I'm trying to work on and I, I kind of touched on as far as like what I did yesterday goes. Um, I'm trying to get better at, especially now that we've started the channel and everything, mm -hmm. at um, trying to relax without feeling guilty about it, like without being productive in any kind of way and just kind of sitting down and, and doing something that I enjoy without thinking like I should record this or I should clip it or how can I turn this into some sort of content or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's like a constant journey. But yesterday was sort of the first step of that where I was a little aggressive with myself and saying like, just sit down and like play something that you're interested in playing <laughs> and like <clears throat> devote hours to it if i want to without worrying about content feeling like i'm being a bum essentially and, and just sitting at home on a saturday and stuff like that yeah no that's that's awesome i, I feel like that's something i battle with too like I, I i've i've been doing it a little more recently but i had a hard time like oh i'm you know i'm playing fortnite right now like i could totally stream this and maybe get some like clips or content out of it uh yeah and but but recently i have been making the choice to sometimes like nope just play games with the boys you know like la like last night uh we were hopping on fortnite and i know my i know my stream doesn't like handle fortnite very well while i'm streaming it and i was like you know what i'm not gonna worry about it i'm just gonna end the stream and i'm just gonna play fortnite and enjoy it yeah. and i've been doing that a little more with like just some other games and just some other moments like ah, i don't need the stream right now you know it's i just i just yeah. want to play with the boys without having to try to read chat and worry about my scenes and whatnot so yeah and that's another thing that i i need to like I, along those same lines like just in terms of self-improvement <laughs> of of trying to connect with friends and play with them offline in a non to to like to kind of show them that they mean more to me than just like playing on youtube and shit like that um yeah. which I, I don't have any reason to believe that they think that i 
I am in any different headspace than that, but, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, uh, I agree. Like, it's good to have those times with your friends where there's no, it's not like content create. You're just spending time with, yeah. Yeah. With you, you, with, with your pals. Yeah. 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 I, I think, I think I've been getting a little burnt out, not on streaming, but just like only playing games that I think would be good on a stream. I don't do too much like the YouTube gaming stuff. So recording wise, I don't worry about that, but just like, like, Oh, I really want to play. Um, I'm just trying to like go look at my desktop really quick. Uh, I really want to play just, you know, game a, and, but I just don't, I don't, I don't think it'd be really entertaining. There's not much to talk about and, or like I'm really focused. And so I'm like, I won't stream it then. And then if I don't stream it, I just usually don't end up playing. And so I've been trying to get myself in the headspace of like, either just play a game just cause you want to play a game. Don't worry about streaming it or just stream it. And don't worry about if people want to watch it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's, and the same thing goes with like, just trying to play games with friends it's like oh you know let's let's uh let's play this game and not worry about you know trying to make a con trying to make content out of it just just enjoy yeah it. no i i like that i like that you're you're embarking on that journey <laughs> yeah i mean it's a constant i think it's just a constant kind of i don't want to call it a struggle but it's like it's a conscientious decision sometimes to just cut it off, like cut off all productivity and just kind of yeah. have some, some independent time for yourself and for the people that you like playing games with and stuff. Mm -hmm. so, I think, yeah. yeah, a lot like feeling bad does play a lot into that. Like, 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 like when it comes to like your followers and your subscribers, it's like, Oh, like if I, I'm letting them down if I'm not live or, you know, or your viewers, like you're not, I'm letting them down if I'm not uploading and but it's yeah. also like you're gonna get burnt out and you're gonna like hate gaming and resent gaming i yeah, feel like i feel yeah. like I, I follow and listen to like a lot of podcasts and like youtube videos of other gamers that i really enjoy and i i hear a lot of them just like like uh, like I, I stopped playing this game because i just feel like i always had to make a video out of it or i always had to stream it or the people that you know my, my viewers didn't want me to stream it and so i just never played it and i hated it and i i don't want to fall into that you know yeah yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Um, yeah. Oh heck, oh heck yeah. Uh, was there was there anything else on your list? Uh, well, I'll make like one last note that I, I have enjoyed ki the kind of like networking feel, and I don't want to call it networking because that's such a businessy talk. But like, well, we've we've gotten to meet you, mm -hmm. another creator, and that has been like a massive kind of help to us. Like, it just feels good to be sort of building a mutual community together yeah um and i've been I, I, like joining other small streamers on twitch and joining their discords just to kind of see what they do uh mm -hmm. and just in terms of like talking about that you know content creation community and stuff like that it, it is it's nice talking to and and connecting with other uh other streamers who have those same kind of feelings and stuff like that so just no, a, a small one note on that yeah no it's it's been wonderful the best way that i would word it is networking too but even then like i, I look i look at you and matt as like friends now yeah but yeah, uh in here. but but no though no, it's it's actually very nice uh and like when i back during the holidays i had like a little event going on and i met so many people it was all for this big charity thing and i met so many people through that and now some of them like i stream with them regularly or we plan like once a month or once bi-weekly we all play in like a little get together and you know play like a specific game and it is nice and like how you're saying you're going into like other twitch streamers chats uh probably like 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 a year ago i had like a for like a month or two i had like a kick of just finding a bunch of small streamers and following them throwing like a gifted sub at them and just trying to try to chat with them and make friends and it wasn't even it wasn't even for like a ooh, you know i can use this collab to you know get all their followers or you know like it, it was yeah. it was it was just to like just just meet people and like get in their discords and everything and just not necessarily learn from them but just see what hey. it means see what it really means to be like a small streamer in this yeah. in this space yeah. and yeah. just commiserating because so much of this work is like independent work of just like trial and error trying to figure it out and it's just really nice to talk to someone who's also done that and mm -hmm. learned lessons and and you can like just talk to them about 
the different things that you've learned. So yeah, I totally get it. It's definitely, it, I mean, it doesn't come, same here, it doesn't come from a place of like, how can I leverage this to <laughs> be more successful in a way? It's, it's more yeah. like, it's nice to commiserate with other creators about the challenges and successes and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And like you just, and it's nice once you build that bond where you can kind of support each other. Like, oh, I'm running into this yeah, issue. Yeah. Uh, can you help me? And like yeah. uh, the other, the other like collaboration channel that I'm in or uh, Discord, yeah, Discord server. Uh, they're always, they're always like, hey, a lot of them are VTubers, and so they have like a lot of VTuber questions. And it's just, it's just nice to kind of see them help each other out. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's a good feeling. It's nice yeah. to have. So. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because we do have questions for you, which we, we can save later uh, for mm -hmm. like VTubing questions. Now that I we am, have our map, I am here, we have, uh, I am here for it. <laughs> some VTubing ideas. So. Ooh, I'm, I'm, ex ex I'm excited to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> well, heck yeah. We'll probably do kind of what you do, which is like bounce back and forth, do VTubing sometimes and do mm -hmm. on camera some other time. So. Yeah, yeah. I, it usually just falls into like sometimes I just don't feel like having my face on the on the screen it's like i i usually end up trying to still be pretty expressive even with my vtube yeah. uh with my with my model but even then it's uh yeah it's just like if i if i have a bad hair day sometimes i'll throw that on i i know i'm probably doing it for other reasons that people are like no i just really enjoy like i really want my <laughs> i really want a vtube uh and i do too but so but i usually end up using it like when i just when i'm a little insecure or i just don't feel like i just like i didn't make my bed and i don't want to show it off so <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, kind of thing yeah. but it, it i'm also starting to run into a space where like i'm trying to make like little gimmicks with my vtube and whatnot uh and just make it a little more interesting while i'm doing it and make and so i, I don't want my viewers to kind of like when i'm vtubing be like oh he's vtubing today i want them to be like oh yes he's vtubing like this that means yeah. this thing will be happening or whatever yeah an so. opportunity for some something special kind of yeah exactly exactly yeah i like the sound of that it's, it seems like um i think and we, we, this is, I'm basing this on a, a 30 second like conversation basically, but it sounds like we're leaning toward like on individual days, we would do our cameras, but on like a friend Friday or something like that, we would do VTubing. So it was more of like, uh, we are not the star of that stream. Like the, the whole friend group is the, yeah, uh, I don't, I don't know. That's uh, that like I said, nice. that was based oh, on I, I 30 like second that. preliminary uh, discussion <laughs> that we had had. Yeah, no, I like that though. No, I I like that direction with it. I might have to I might have to keep that in mind as well. Not this not to piggyback off y'all, but I no no this I, is no, what it's about. I, it's about like it's the, I like I like the and... I like the mindfulness of that though. So yeah, it's fun stuff. Indeed. Well, if if that concludes your your uh, your look back, we've. <laughs> I don't know how much time you have because we've already hit the hour mark and we haven't even started. We haven't even started the news. I'm cool to keep going, but I'm I cool to keep going, I, I, I would say I understand if you have time constraints. So the only thing in my calendar or my uh, my yeah, I guess my calendar for today is to actually clean my apartment like I didn't do <laughs> yesterday. So yeah, we're, yeah, I'm totally good. I'm good with procrastinating on that and continuing to have a, a fun conversation for sure. Well, heck yeah. So before we go into the positive press section, I'm gonna do something that i keep forgetting to do which is reading okay. the discords look back we only have two and one of them is from you <laughs> okay <laughs> but i but i do i do want to read them and this and this is for anybody who's currently watching or listening uh if you join the savvy society discord you too could put in your positive uh moments that you had throughout your week and we will read them out um or i should say i and any future guests that i have on uh but i'll, I'll read the one that wasn't from you first and then uh maybe i'll let you you can read your one that you had and we can talk about it okay that sounds uh, good. yeah so from our very own titanium tv or tyler who was our first guest on the show uh they put finally started going back to therapy earlier this week instead of anger management therapy uh this is more focused on depression and adhd i'm very hopeful and optimistic uh tyler if you're listening that's awesome i'm happy to hear it uh Pete, have you ever, uh, this might be too personal, but have you ever like, <laughs> have you ever gone to therapy? Is that something you've ever like, <laughs> if you, you don't have to answer that either. I know that's, no, no, pretty, no, that's, good. that's pretty personal. Uh, so <laughs> I'm an, I'm a pretty open person. So you'll find that over time I'll overshare information, but I'll try and dial it back when we're on these kind of streams. Um, but no, yes, I definitely have been to therapy. My, my 
issue, which is an issue with myself, is that I uh, never commit to the therapy. So I'll go to the first initial meeting and then I'll just kind of peter off and not not organize any others. But uh, it, it's definitely something that I need to need to try and do as well. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I think I think therapy is uh, it's very important, and I think it's I think it's still like under. Un, like under looked at that's not the correct like phrasing but it's yeah I, I think it's something that a lot of people don't really like seriously take into consideration and uh, but it, i feel like a lot of people can benefit from it uh about a year ago and years prior i i had i had a therapist that i would see a lot and every once in a while uh i can do they do video chats with me ever just like every now and then i'm like hey do you, could you fit me into like next week or something and they're like sure um but no, the the benefits of of therapy are immaculate, and and I and I like that uh, they were able to transition from anger management therapy to normal therapy, which I'm assuming means that there was progress when it came to anger management, and that's something that they don't necessarily need to work on anymore. So, congratulations, Tyler. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> I, uh, if I was gonna go to therapy, it would probably be for the same thing. Not that I'm like explosive but i do just internally get frustrated constantly yeah. i mean just like especially especially with like work stuff and i'll just be simmering under the surface but like just smiling i'm sure with insane eyes uh trying to smile through it and, and <laughs> yeah <laughs> not seem as pissed off as i am uh so i i need to make that progress too yeah i think i think mine again without going too deep into it was a lot to do with like insecurity uh and just like my connections with people it was something i always struggled with for a while especially especially as a young adult it was something that i was struggling with a lot so that's that was therapy for that's what therapy looked like for me <laughs> um well i was listening to your your episode with dallas and you guys were talking about like you were specifically you were mentioning your challenges with like communication in terms of like responding to just digging into my armpit on stream I've been doing the same thing. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting a little sweaty. <laughs> so. uh, just in terms of like uh, answering people back when you get like notifications and stuff like that. And I felt that so deeply in my core of like, I struggle so much with communicating with people and uh, like in a timely manner and stuff. Like I'll sit on, on messages for a really long time because I'm notifications overwhelm me. And when they pile in too much, I'm like, how do I even, address these how, like wh how do i tackle them which the answer is like one at a time and just fucking do it but like <laughs> yeah i'm so resistant to that for some reason um no i so, I, yeah, I, I, mean, I feel you on that one yeah yeah that that uh i was i was glad to like hear that from you because it it does feel like well, when you're that kind of person it feels like you're the only person doing that and, and that you're like you're the People worst person in the world up for <laughs> how uncommunicative yeah. you are. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was nice hearing that somebody else is is kind of in that same in the frame of mind of of trying to to move past that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's definitely something I've I've always struggled with, and even today still do. It's I think I gave the example of how this person messaged me on monday and i didn't get back to them on friday but then there's also before sending that message on friday there's the battle of like i'm already five days late do i even bother messaging them like i want them to know that i still care and that i saw their message yeah but but like yeah. is, is me messaging them five days later just gonna piss them off now like <laughs> exactly yeah and that's and something i battle with a lot and like i get like like discord i was actually talking to somebody that had on stream uh last night uh because they had messaged me uh like hours prior and i'm like i'm so sorry like discord is just and and like how i was messaging you and like discord is something i'm really bad at checking uh and so like i like i was like i'm sorry i didn't get back to you and they ended up i ended up not talking to them till they popped up in the stream which i feel like feels even like a little more crummy to me <laughs> but i just didn't like i just didn't see their message or if i did like they again like you can catch me at a bad time like if i'm working i don't like to have those notifications if it depending on the topic this is like unrelated to last night's message like depending on the topic like okay i just can't get into this right now and then i forget or just stuff keeps popping up or i'm overwhelmed yeah yeah and and if it's somebody that the uh, same exact way and it, and i i hate to say this but if it's somebody that 
obligations come frequently from them, I'll check their messages less frequently just because yeah, uh, it, it's an over, it's just so overwhelming to try and do that. And it's so fucking rude of me to do. And I understand, like, I know that, and I'm sure like people are so sick of my like little messages of like, Hey, so sorry the, about the delay here. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, it, I, I keep using this phrase, but it is a, a journey of like trying to overcome that and just be a responsible person to mm -hmm. and answer. So, yeah, I think the other like the other half of that battle is trying to reach out to people like they haven't messaged me, but also I haven't messaged them kind of thing and just trying to stay in touch with people like uh, personally, like with my family, I think I'm kind of seen as like the like the oh Savian showed up to this the the one of the six family functions or <laughs> and I'm just I'm just I'm terrible with like keeping in touch with family. It's not it's not that I don't care about them or anything yeah. and, and this goes this goes to friends too that are outside my immediate circle it's just it's just the whole like i don't know i just feel like i get caught up in the day-to-day -day, but it, it, as as always it's not a good excuse because so does everyone it's yeah f it's finding the time to let them know that you still care about them <laughs> yeah. yeah it's it's like i promise it's not that i don't want to talk to you it's just I feel like I have so much going on <laughs> and there's already people that I haven't replied to. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it, same thing here. I mean, it's like, it, it's, I never want them to feel like it's a reflection on, on what they mean to me as a person, mm -hmm. but I have no way, I have no idea how to phrase that because actions speak louder than words. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I promise that's not where my headspace is at even though it seems like that's what I'm doing. Uh, so yeah, I was, I was just really glad that you had brought that up because it, it meant a lot to hear that it was validating to hear that somebody else was, yeah, had it's, that same experience. It's really easy to think that like, yeah, you're the only person <laughs> that, that's in your life that you're, that you're, cause you're doing it to them. So that it feels like nobody else is doing it to anybody else. You know what I mean? So, yeah. 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 Well, heck yeah. Did you, did you, was there anything you wanted to add on that or you, or do you want to read your, uh, your little your little moment from uh, some weeks back or like a month from now i think yeah i can read a, a little moment um so I, i'll read it verbatim here i said uh, i was recently asked to be a groomsman at a friend's wedding uh, this guy was my older brother's age growing up but never let me feel like the little kid tagging along he's been a good friend it meant a lot to be asked um so in february i went to utah to see a, a lifelong friend get married um and he was he was actually i think a few years older than than my older brother who's two years older than me so i mean you know like when you're growing up five, like five years between like two and five years feels like a substantial amount of time or a substantial like age difference yeah and once you hit like i mean i'm like 30 now and i think about like 25 year olds and i'm like that's not that much of a difference but as you're getting like when you're growing up it feels substantial no, yeah like yeah no like i remember being like a freshman in high school and i'd see like the juniors and i'm like wow they're so <laughs> they're yes, so much yeah, more exactly. mature than me like <laughs> yeah yeah um and so that's kind of what it was like we would hang out uh and he would be you know considerably i don't know not considerably but uh in my mind considerably older than me and more mature and more you know, ahead of things in life. And, uh, but he always treated me like I was, you know, part of the friend group, like I was an equal and not like this annoying kid that was tagging along with his brother all the time, mm -hmm. which was a lot. I mean, they would pick on me like a lot. Of course. But, yeah. <laughs> it's standard. <laughs> I mean, we would play Call of Duty together and, uh, and they would just cheat constantly. Um, and it was just, we didn't have internet at the time so like they would come over to our house and we were like live it we didn't have high speed internet so we would just play private matches uh and um when he would bring his xbox over it'd be kind of like uh, over LAN, i guess and so uh, we would separate the tvs out and they one time put a, a mirror behind <laughs> me so that they could keep turning around to see where i was on no the way yeah yeah and i didn't realize until later on i was like how do you keep finding me uh and then i turned around and there was a fucking full-size mirror behind me that um, was it was it the pick on you or were you just that good no it's, no it's so, that, it's so they needed it so they needed the, they needed to nerf me, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no no it wasn't that it was uh, they were 
They were just destroying me left and right. And my brother loved to, still loves to use explosives. I don't know if it's like a humiliation tactic or what, but like <laughs> you'll just be innocently minding your own business, trying to find one of them on, on a map and a rocket launcher will just come. I, I was thinking like getting, getting killed by an RPG just feels so crappy <laughs> because it's so, <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> like at least like yeah. with a gun, you have to land your shots and everything and it, i feel like there's skill to it but i feel like with an rpg it's just boom anything in like the five foot yeah. radius done <laughs> and it was so it's so like insulting to get blown up by something like that and hear him over the mic just losing his shit like laughing about it like <laughs> yeah he got you. but a lot of fun too at the same time um so but were, were there ever moments where like you were able to you were able to get them and you can laugh at them and be like ha 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 do you, ever, Very... do you ever switch it up on them? Like you pulled out an RPG? Like, <laughs> oh, I would always try. Yeah, I mean, they would still kick my ass. Uh, for a period of time when I was in college, I spent a lot of time playing the new like Modern Warfare, and, mm -hmm. and I played Gunfight. No, not Gunfight. Um, gun game. No, it was Gunfight. Now that you say Gun Game, it was Gunfight. Okay. Uh, it was the, like two v two or three v three, and you get six rounds. Whoever gets. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Six I remember first that mode. wins. Mm -hmm. love that still love that mode so much uh my like college friends and i we would team up and and play and that like added so much pressure because they were good and i needed to match mm -hmm. uh and got pretty i mean when you're doing that i mean it's because you don't have the unlimited lives like you have technically in in deathmatch you have to be a mm -hmm. lot more careful and mm -hmm. that think i more. think like yeah it, like honed my skills at the time i'm nowhere close to the, they're kicking my ass again now because i haven't been playing that but for a period of time, I was better than them and, and pissing them off because I was using the marksman rifle and they were like, <laughs> they were like that gun pisses us off. Stop using that gun because it's a one <laughs> shot, one kill. Um, mm. But they're back to kicking my ass again. So it was a nice little window of time where I was on top, but yeah, not anymore. Every every uh, that was about, I was about to say every dog has its day, but that's not a that's not I don't think that's the right <laughs> saying for that. <laughs> that's uh well heck yeah that was that's nice uh yeah. and so like and so the wedding was nice how was utah what was utah like in february utah is a shockingly ugly state um <laughs> well i guess i should say salt lake is a shockingly like ugly region um and and by that i mean the the mountains are beautiful like absurdly beautiful uh and when you're driving through them and stuff they look really nice but down in the like flats kind of area it's and and in salt lake city it's so industrialized mm -hmm. like it looks like the spongebob industrial park and i don't mean that like as an exaggeration i think it just looks so that was an insane crack by the way the, oh could you hear I, that I, I, yeah yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> i didn't expect you to get the same level of crack on both turns um oh yeah i just i have i have bubble wrap spine so I don't think I can do that. Felt like a small the arm, the right arm of this chair fell off at one point. Oh no, so that's I not good. <laughs> don't have it. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I was getting stiff. That's my bad. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, what was I thinking? Um, uh, you're talking about like how it looks oh, like the, industri ugly. the SpongeBob Industrial. <laughs> yeah, part. yeah, yeah. It's it's just a like really muddy gray uh drat there's like no greenery barely any trees any, any i can like, i can picture kind of it yeah um and then you have the, the like really beautiful mountains in the background but that's when you're there it's like that makes up for very little of the Every, anything else going of what on what you're immediately surrounded by yeah yeah um, when i when so. i picture it i just picture like large like plots of just like cracked like sandstone just like just or just cracked yep. sand just like uh, for miles and miles yeah. and, then, and then and then you have like the rows of houses that have like their plant bushes maybe but then it's just again everything else is just dead dirt yeah 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 and that is kind of what i didn't get to go to the like desert area um and that that's what i'm like like when i go back i want to go to the what is it like moab kind of area and do like some hiking in the in the desert region mm -hmm. uh, but that scares me hiking yeah. in the desert i don't know i feel like something bad would just happen to me like 
I don't know, like, 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 oh, my water bottle fell out and I'm 20 miles from home. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> now I drink my urine to get back. Darn. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that is a little scary. I, I'd much rather die in the desert than the ocean, though. Yeah, I, I'm thinking of, like, The Life of Pi, that movie. Uh, I'm thinking of, like, how grim it seemed to... I'm sure that's not the most realistic depiction of what it's like to be on stuck in the ocean, but yeah, yeah. the ocean's like me. It's like my I biggest uh, fear. I feel like once the heat exhaustion sets in, I could just kind of pass out peacefully and and die that way. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like with the like with the ocean, not only do you have the salt, but then you you do got the sun, and I guess in the desert it'd be nothing for miles. But I feel like the ocean is just so. It is. It's intimidating to, to yeah. just see all just the, just nothing but nothing but but the blue and there's like an infinite amount of possibilities happening under you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what scares me so much. Is like I have no idea what's going on underneath me, and it could be the most like sinister shit coming straight toward me, and I have uh -huh. no idea about it. If uh, I had a raft, I would feel better. But yeah, if I was just floating in the ocean, no raft or anything, oh oh, I yeah, I'd be. Oh, my pants would be done. <laughs> I yeah, I that oh man, that might be a new fear unlocked. I've never really had a fear of the ocean. I love the water, but if I could if there was no land around and I had no boat, no raft, that would do it for me. I would go insane right there. It's just about, like thinking about the people who have fallen off of like this is not pleasantly positive anymore at, at this point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, thinking about the uh pleasantly the positive that after hours. <laughs> Um, the people who've like fallen off of gotten drunk and fallen off of cruise ships mm -hmm. and have just found themselves like waiting in the middle of the ocean knowing that like oh pe maybe no one noticed that I fell off they might not even be coming back for me they might not I might hit current and drift away if they even do turn around and like just that stomach dropping feeling the idea of that scares me so much of, of like shoulder up I'm gonna cook on, like by the sun yeah and I'm down below i'm that threat of being eviscerated by <laughs> anything and everything ocean creatures completely out of my yeah yeah so it's i this is gonna, that. i think this this is about to get really grim but i think at that point <laughs> after like the two hour mark of just floating there i think i would just swim down as much as i could and then just close my eyes <laughs> some water yeah yeah i don't know i just i was just like okay i'm a 50 feet deep I'm just open my mouth. I don't know. <laughs> I the, my all survival instincts out the window after two hours of just sitting there. <laughs> yeah, this is a really like grim. I'm gonna continue the grim. This will be the last bad thing that I say, and then I'll yeah, go yeah. Into, my, into my news story if that's okay, which is a positive that's, thing about the that's, ocean. That's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was uh, on, on the flight back from uh, Utah. I took a. I flew Spirit there, and then I flew Frontier back, just the, the budget flying, because uh, I don't have infinite money for for those flights. Of course. Um, so, like, I, I was flying back uh, Frontier, and we took, like, a an hour flight from Salt Lake to um, Denver, Colorado. And it was the sketchiest freaking flight that I've ever been on. I mean, it was just... I was sitting next to the wing, and I'm sure that this is built in the way it's supposed to be, but it was, like waving uh, the whole time and the wave was winging or the or, wing was or, waving the, um, i said winging the, the, <laughs> what did i say the wave was winging <laughs> my bad uh, and uh like we kept dipping down and i don't know what we were doing but we kept like like the plane felt like it was doing this yeah. the, like and so we would dip do a hard dip and everybody would grip the seat in front of them yeah and then we would st stabilize back out but it was constant turbulence for the entire hour i was sitting next to a mother and her daughter was sitting in the row in front of us and her daughter before the flight took off was like i'm really afraid of flying and so the whole time the mom was like are you okay are you okay because we were it just seemed so treacherous yeah and then once the flight landed uh the airline um crew got on the mic and they were like whoo just like acknowledging that it was a super sketchy flight yeah that doesn't sound pleasant at all oh my yeah. i've never been on a plane and hearing that just makes me not want to get on a plane even more now 
<laughs> I've never had that experience on any other plane. All, all of the other ones have been super stable feeling. And uh, like I was looking it up, apparently the last like big flight crash in the US hasn't happened for like 10 years. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes me feel more confident or less confident that I could be the, the like an, the 10 year the anomaly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but so like what bad, I mean, relating that to ocean, I, I had a really f uh, messed up thought. I don't know if I can curse on this. I'm sure I already have. Uh, yeah, no, um, it's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah. I had a really messed up thought uh, as we were like, like during one of the dips, like my hands were super sweaty and I was just gripping my seat and I was thinking, cause I just don't like the feeling of falling in general. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I was like, this is why I don't like that feeling because I was destined to die in this fucking plane. Uh, but I uh, I was thinking to myself about the like that Titan uh, submarine that went down oh, and they no. got like <laughs> they just yeah. got like I'm not trying to be insensitive about it because people lost their lives, but they got deleted basically like the, but it was such a such a quick. It's not funny. I just the, the thing. The it's not. No, <laughs> the, the, no. It, <laughs> It's just the just, it was such a quick action that happened yeah. because of the pressure and mm -hmm. i was thinking like that's so terrifying and it got so much like news and notoriety about what a scary situation that is and i'm thinking like i at that moment i was like i would much rather be in that situation where i'm like maybe blissfully unaware that that the end is coming than know that i'm gonna fall out of the sky yeah. and be totally aware that it's happening at the time um so i think I yeah know. that's, that's the messed up thought yeah that i no. have, had had yeah I, that that falls on like the whole i've heard conversation again the last last grim bit is like do you want to die just like blissfully ignorant or like or like do you want to die scared kind of thing <laughs> yeah yeah I'm, i'll go um, blissfully ignorant i i'm yeah i was i was actually i didn't know this about planes and this is this could be a little bit of motivation for anybody going through tough times but planes meet their maximum you know vertical potential going into the wind like head like head like head against the wind so really? like plane, yeah planes don't take off with the wind they take off against the wind because they want the most air going against the wings and okay. i i never i never really like knew that about like aerodynamics uh because yeah no. because the way that like a wing works is it takes air longer to travel over the top of a wing than it does under like the bottom of a wing is usually just like nice and flat while the top has that curve that inc that creates the the distance yeah and so what it does is it creates an area of low pressure because air like fluid dynamics talks about gases because gas tends to move like a liquid and so like the air wants to stay as like one piece and so it creates an area of low pressure at the top of the wing and it, it, it and it makes the air underneath want to rise to fill that low pressure which is what pushes the plane up mm. and i guess okay. you i guess you want the most i don't know why i just got into that <laughs> i think it's because i just learned about it so i thought it was like it's just so interesting i didn't yeah, know that i didn't know that, i never knew how planes really worked i was like oh you get speed and you take off i <laughs> yeah. i never really thought about what the science was behind that but what's interesting is that like on our on the second flight back it was supposed to be like a four and a half hour flight from denver to uh the east coast i won't dox myself even though i've done it plenty of times on our on our stream but <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> and uh they they got in on the intercom and they were like all right everyone we're looking at about a, a two and a half hour flight back and I looked at the guy who was sitting next to me, who was also this, this guy from Roanoke that I didn't know, but we like introduced ourselves. And we were both like two and a half hours. Like it took us four and a half to get out here. And someone overheard us talking and they said, because of the trade winds, it'll push you way faster. And now I'm, and in my head, I was thinking the trade winds were going with us and pushing us ahead. But now mm -hmm. that you say that, I'm wondering if we were going against the trade winds and making more progress that way i have no idea how it works but that's interesting it, stuff now I'm gonna in have terms to go of speed i have no idea whether you get more speed you know with or against but i know just in terms yeah. of like vertical vertical takeoff you want the wind against you okay. rather than rather than with you and i never i always would have just assumed you want less air resistance but actually you want more because it's the air resistance keeping you in the air <laughs> yeah yeah 
Well, heck yeah. Um, uh, you could... said you had a news story related to... We're, we're about an hour and a half in. Are you still good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You cut okay. me off anytime, though. I'm, I'm, no, I, listen, I'm I could do this all day. On. I could okay. do this all day, so you let me know when, when it's getting too far for you. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, might have to take an actual bathroom break, though, at some point. <laughs> uh, that works. Um, yeah. So, yeah, this, this article, this first one that I have is uh, about the coral reefs so there was a um there was a group that did a study about some some things that they're implementing at uh the marls mars coral reef restoration program in indonesia and apparently they can regrow the dead reefs there in four years which is nice because like i mean over the, i feel like the past 10 years i've been reading articles about how you know the the uh reef in australia what the great coral reef mm -hmm. is disappearing by x percent every year so now it sounds like we can get we can grow that back which was supposed to take a long time uh, yeah. to be able to do but is it because so, like it's it's bleaching that happens to the like lets you know that they're dead right it's when they it's when they get white right yeah i think so yeah yeah yeah. So the, the article said that one of the reasons why they can't grow back is because once they're bleached and dead, they take up like the, the dead body of the coral is in the way for new coral to grow. Hmm. And so okay. this system, I think, clears out the dead and, and gives more room for for new coral to grow. Sweet. I, lo yeah. I love to I love to hear that. Uh, yeah, I remember like that was like a, a big kind of and it's it's important i'm saying i'm saying doomsday but like that it is it is the core reefs are important but i remember like that just being plastered all over the news like and it was making like every headline on every you know every news site was yeah you know our coral reefs are dying <laughs> kind of like, thing yeah, so bleak, and you never like... you never hear too much about what's being done to, to help that either so yeah it's nice it's nice to hear that yeah i agree i mean it's uh i mean so uh, so much of the news is negative just by nature just because that's what people tend to click on so it it's nice to hear that we're able to reverse one of those bigger negative news pieces from mm -hmm. recent years yeah and, and they're doing I, it in a way that doesn't involve like throwing tires into the ocean which was their first <laughs> idea <laughs> wait what uh years ago they tried to replace the reef like in terms of like habitat for animals by throwing bits and pieces or full full like tires into the ocean and ended up doing like colossal ecological damage to, to that area because of that. I, I want to talk the... to the person who came up with that idea. I mean, I'm not going to pretend to under that. I understand how all that works, but I just, I feel like inherently yeah. that feels like something that it just sounds work. like a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Just, just yeah. Crash in the ocean. Would that work? Like, yeah. Cause <laughs> we haven't, we haven't been doing that enough already. Let's just go put some rubber in there. <laughs> <laughs> no shit too. We already got the plastics and everything. Come on, let's just yeah. throw some rubber in there. And I'm sure those like I mean, all tires have those like really thin pieces of like metal wire too to like True. hold them together. I'm sure yeah. that's great for the fish. I mean, they probably <laughs> love that. It's probably delicious. Yeah. 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 No, and I don't know how well tires biodegrade because I feel like I go into the woods and I see a random tire from like the 1950s in there sometimes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So so I don't know. Well, I'm glad that we definitely came up with a better better plan than tire plan. <laughs> yeah. The, so there's a picture of them putting it down, and, and it looks like this, like, like a series of wires in a, in a... It's not mesh. I don't know how to describe it, if I'm being honest, but the, it, it looks like an intricate little system they've got going on to, to regrow these. Well, heck yeah. Fun stuff. Uh, and, this, and this, and this, and this is something that, and this is something that, like they're that they are implementing, or something that they just kind of discovered, and, the, and they hope like, to implement. It looks like they had some success uh, with with one series of of growth, and then uh, they're looking at replicating it <laughs> okay. more wide. So, um, have you ever been to a coral reef? No, I haven't. Have uh, you ever been to no, like a been... like a clear water, like just freshwater body or anything like that, like a spring? Oh, no, I haven't been to I've been to like beaches on trips that were like like ocean beaches that were clear. Um, mm, OK, but never like fresh water. I got for my brother's wedding. He got married on uh, like on a cruise 
um, and we went to this like private beach that I think that they had found out about. And the water was super clear, and it was just us on the beach wherever we had ended up. And I was mm -hmm. so nervous about it. Like I like other people to be around because there are more bodies in the water splashing around, scaring yeah. the scary fish away. But it was just the three no, it's of us. More, it's, it's more likely that you won't get eaten compared to the other people. <laughs> that was the other half of that. I wasn't going to word that out loud, but like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, uh, that, so that's the only time. Have you been to a freshwater one? Yes. I've never seen like clear water in the ocean, which would be really, really sick. Uh, but yeah, here, here in Florida, there's like a spring up north. And yeah, it was, it was beautiful. It had like. It had like like not seaweed because it's fresh water, but it just had like these like just freshwater weeds just like floating to the top, and you can you can see all of it perfectly and beautifully. And they had like scuba divers going in, which uh, now thinking back to it, you, they didn't want you getting in the stream that l that led to the freshwater spring because of alligators. Because I'm in Florida, of course, and so I'm just thinking like, what's what's stopping an alligator from just going down the stream i think there yeah, might have been there might have been something there to like like a fence or a gate or something but also i know that they had like there's fish and stuff swimming all around you so i don't think that really apply i don't know but uh, but either way yeah it, a freshwater spring they're pretty cool they're really cold actually i thought that i thought it was going to be warm no they're yeah. they're they're freezing <laughs> at least the one that i went to was dog cold i, I don't know I, yeah. yeah i guess that kind of makes sense um just thinking about it coming from underground mm -hmm. although you said that there was a stream up top that was also leading into it so yeah it had yeah it had like a like a creek not like a it was, it was actually pretty like big so i don't know if creek would like it, but it's too small to be a river you know what i yeah. mean so yeah. i guess a creek would be the correct term but <clears throat> yeah it had like a good body of water flowing into it and i don't think does it does a spring have to be coming from underground just because I just because I'm thinking like here in Florida, there's not too much like elevation. Oh right. For you know, so I don't know how that works. I don't know how springs work. So. <laughs> I thought that was the thing was that the springs are like a source from underwater <laughs> that's pushing up or from underground that's pushing upward. But I could totally. I mean, the, I'm basing this on. There might be multiple. Ten years like, ago, I went to high school and, and did not pay attention in science. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> that's fair that's fair oh uh, yeah i don't know i don't know how it worked but yeah i do remember there being like a creek that led into the the spring <clears throat> okay yeah uh well heck yeah that was, that was your news article yeah did uh do you just want to like i know you had a couple uh we could just piggyback i can read mine and if you want to we could piggyback or ping pong back and forth not piggyback ping pong <laughs> and okay. yeah if we whenever we want to stop we can that sounds good yeah, so uh, the one that I have here is from the OptimusDaily.com, and the headline reads, Inmates celebrate first degrees earned through Yale and University of New Haven Initiative. And the, the breakdown of the article is basically you have these incarcerated folks who have spent... Uh, this it, it, it talks about one specific individual... But just like to kind of cover the whole program is <clears throat> you have these inmates uh, who are taking these like college courses in prison and what they're what they're seeing just from like research. Uh, they don't necessarily quote the where the research comes from. Uh, so I can't give a source to that. But they're saying like research shows that when you're offering like higher education to people that are uh, <clears throat> that are incarcerated. Um, right that they they see uh they they see an improvement in like behavioral problems uh while they're in prison as well as once they leave and like they're reintroduced into into society they see a, a correlation of the people who have taken those you know higher education courses and have gotten degrees they see an improvement of like they're not they're not going back to jail they're seeing like less crime from these individuals like like no crime like they're they're getting jobs in their respective fields like with their degrees instead and they're starting a new life and yeah and uh one of the a, a quote that i liked from uh the inmate that they kind of focus on in this article is he is he talks about how 
when you're in the prison, it feels like you're kind of going, when you go into these classes, it feels like you're stepping into a campus more than you're in a jail. Right. And I think yeah. it, and I, I, you know, I haven't been to prison, but I, I could imagine that that is like a nice and comforting change in feeling as com as compared to, you know, I the feeling just, of confinement uh, and ex exactly. And it, and yeah. I'm sure like it, like the feeling of like, I'm sure it gives like a feeling of purpose. Uh, and yeah. that is, that is actually something that it, that it states here. And it, and it makes, it makes, not only are you giving the inmates second chances, but they can, they could feel that. And they're like, like I'm doing this to have a better life on the outside. While sometimes I can imagine while you're in there, if you're doing nothing, you're just kind of like, well, I'm here, I'll get out one day. And, and you know, and that's it. I don't know what, like, I don't know, like, what programs they have inside of a prison to prepare you for being reintroduced into society. But I feel like a higher education is that that's a big one. That's an important one that makes you because I, I love school. I haven't gotten a degree yet, but I, don't, yeah. I, I think school is a good thing and giving these inmates yeah, hope, yeah. hope for the life outside of outside of prison and giving them again yeah. a sense of purpose once they once they get out. That's awesome. That makes me think of like, I mean, you hear about other countries outside of the U.S. and they have prison programs that's, that sound kind of like that, where it, like I've watched TikToks where it almost sounds like they're at like a resort kind of. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's all about like rehabilitation and preparing them to be, to not be put in the positions that they were put in that required them to create, to, to commit like a certain crime for certain mm -hmm. people. I mean, for, uh, there are other crimes that, uh, of that, course are yeah. inexcusable of course but, of course uh, but yeah, yeah but yeah i mean for for you know for certain certain crimes i mean this inmate here I, in I've the article it. was locked up for six years for like drinking and driving which is you know uh something that can easily be worked on you know mm -hmm. what i mean like, i don't want to yeah. say easily but it's something that can be prevented in the future <laughs> kind of thing yeah and I wouldn't say it's like deserving of like, you don't deserve a future kind of thing. <laughs> I feel like we have such a, like a retribution style. Like, like we want revenge Emma, or we want to like punishment is such a huge part of, of our system and, yeah. and less a part of like building on that rehabilitation aspect of it and, and preparing them to kind of re-enter the world and stuff like that, that mm -hmm. we get lost in and what a prison is supposed to be for um I, that is true i i and I, I i'm curious to know like what like the the number is for the amount of crimes that are committed by people who have already committed a previous crime that's a good and, question and yeah. this and this program you know showing that when they're offered this program and they do get these degrees that they're far less likely to be committing another crime yeah and so i wonder if that would like i'm, I'm sure that has some kind of impact on just crime rates in general because I, 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 like, I know people personally that have, you know, been to jail, they get out, or they've already been to jail twice or three times, and they talk about it, and then they, they're going off and doing the same stuff again. And I, it's, yeah, it's because we don't, we don't give them the tools, and, yeah, we don't give them the tools to, you know, be better. Yeah, or, yeah. Or the, just, or the I, yeah, just because you get out doesn't mean you have the opportunity to be, if you're still being put in the same situations that you had before like i know i know a lot of a lot of stuff happens because of like financial issues and i don't know i feel like with this is just it's just a good way to get the ball rolling for people once they leave yeah for for content for like further or for success afterwards yeah, yeah setting, uh, them up, setting them up setting them up for success into the system yeah uh, yeah i mean because like when you think about like prison and i obviously i'm not an expert at this i'm just kind of taking like guesses but you're mm -hmm. taking people who maybe aren't repeat offenders and you're putting them in a, 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 an extremely toxic environment filled with other offenders that that they're networking with essentially and <laughs> yeah. and, and putting them in situations like i don't want to say dangerous because I, I i've never been to prison so i don't know what the actual reality of it is but from I've like read threads on Reddit and stuff of people saying like, like it's ask Reddit and they're like going to prison. What do I need to know? And it's like, when you get there, like you're, you're going to get picked on immediately and you need to start that fight and finish it. Uh, and it's like stuff like that. It's like, Ugh, yeah. the, you, you have like prison rules and stuff like that. And it's like, 
it just sounds like a a not positive uh reformation it doesn't sound like a program. safe space yeah exactly for anything it like <laughs> sometimes it kind of taking those people and making sure that they're criminals later on mm -hmm. which i mean that might be the not to get conspiracy theory uh centered here but that might be part of the I mean, we have such a for-profit prison system that so is true yeah yeah from what i've i've read a lot of prisons uh have quotas so like they create a budget just like any other business or organization at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. and if they don't fill that budget then they have to give it back and so they'll work harder to fill the the beds basically in the prisons so that they meet the budget that they created that year mm -hmm. and don't have to return any money and then have their budget lowered for the next year which just means that we're encouraging <laughs> more people to go to prison so that we're uplifting that system which is yeah I, i'm sure there's a plethora of reasons why the u.s has one of the highest incarceration rates <laughs> on, on the planet <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Um, like yeah like sure you know you can give our size and our population and everything but i there is the the whole debate of like you know a lot of prisons are privately owned and for profit which when i think about that that just sounds insane <laughs> a for-profit prison like a for-profit yeah. judicial system i don't know that doesn't sound very nice i don't know yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and you do hear these on. other countries where it's like yeah like like if you get locked up in finland you're basically on a vacation but like it, it's they're not encouraging people to get locked up it's just what once you are you you are given a chance to be better and uh, it, 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 it seems more human. And, and, and yeah, like, it seems like it, we're, we're working for for people and not against them kind of thing. Like, again, there, exactly. like, as you said, there are some crimes where, no, you're in there, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, there's yeah. other but there's other moments where it's like, no, we need to make sure that we are supporting these people. So once they're put back into society, they're not repeating the same things again. And yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. Uh, that's uh, it would be great if we could move in that direction as a country. I do. I like I think that we get stuck sometimes. And I, I guess I just mentioned that on the kind of like revenge aspect of it. Or we see see like an innovative program and we don't immediately see the benefit behind it. Like mm -hmm. we just see that they don't deserve that kind of I, I, I see. I hear yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. that. Like they don't deserve college opportunities. And then there's and then people are like, well, I don't get college for, you know, being a normal you know law-abiding citizen doing my taxes and whatnot and so like why yeah. should they get an opportunity for that that's such a self-centered approach too i mean yeah. it's the same thing with student loans people go, i don't pay my student loans it's like okay do you want like your awards in the mail uh yeah. so let's get some let's knock it off it's like just so, um, like like i have to suffer so everybody should have to suffer kind of yeah exactly. or, or i don't benefit for this selfish. so nobody should benefit kind of it is it is very selfish yeah but at, this, at the end of the day, I, I get it. Like you, you gotta look out for yourself, but also you need to be able to look outside of yourself at the same time. So yeah, and realize you're not the only person on the planet. <laughs> yeah, and and yeah. not everything is gonna be built for you. You're not gonna. Not everything is for your benefit, unfortunately. And that's just how life is. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that 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 kind of that kind of concludes my article. Uh, just one thing to note is there's 15 schools. I don't know how many prisons are in this program, but there's 15 schools that are uh, that are in this program. So that's that's nice to hear. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's. Uh, it's, I'm surprised to hear that Yale is one of them. Oh, the I, that's, I think that's kind of what caught my eye. I was like, oh, like Yale. You know, that's that's one of these schools that you, yeah. <laughs> that you hear. Yeah. So, yeah. Good on them for uh, for committing to that. Mm hmm um my next article uh is uh the title is a staff at a virginia wildlife center pretend to be red foxes as they care for <laughs> an, an orphaned kit oh <laughs> it is that like the so like sweet yeah yeah it's like the baby name of um of a fox i guess I, i'd never heard of that before yeah yeah, yeah foxes like, are kits yeah uh, that's brand new news to me um yeah but they they have these like fantastic mr fox looking masks on as they're working on them and the in my head like when i read that i was like it's probably just to comfort them or something like that and it's maybe more novelty than anything because the like what are they even recognizing and like, mm -hmm. visually 
but apparently it's to um, make sure that you don't imprint on them as they're younger. They you, so they're oh, they're yeah, yeah. it's easier to reintroduce them back into the wildlife if they're if humans haven't like imprinted on them. So they yeah. don't talk when they're wearing the masks and stuff like that. They're dead silent and they're trying to avoid seeming like humans. I guess. Interesting. Like I wonder. I wonder how well that is. There is an article. Does it mention how well that works? It doesn't. Uh, it just it just says that that that's their goal. Um, I would love to get a follow up on that one day. I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to that follow cool. that because that's because when you, as for when you're first mentioning, I'm imagining like they're in like a, a red fox suit and they're on all fours <laughs> walking up to the <laughs> crawling up to the, to the fox. Yeah, yeah. Ex <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and <laughs> they're like doing like fox laughs around each other. And <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's little, what yeah. I was. <laughs> but no, that well, like like the way you describe that that just like it sounds like it makes sense, and because you do you do hear that a lot about animals getting reintroduced and then just not knowing what to do with themselves because they've just bonded so much with humans, and yeah. so they they just end up showing up at you know whatever house they were chilling at for a while like oh yeah, you know I, I I rehabbed this uh, or I fostered I don't know not fostered but I rehabbed this fox and then I let it go and then it just it it won't leave the porch. Or it, it died, or, 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 or yeah, or it died because it didn't know how to hunt, or you know, or defend itself from other predators and whatnot. So right, yeah. So that's that's a new. That's, that's a, so now I'm, if I'm at the zoo and I see people wearing a, a, a fox mask, I I won't I won't judge them. I'll be like, oh no, that's <laughs> that's for that's for the animal. Yeah, they're, re, they're helping the kits. <laughs> yeah. No, I I like that story. I love that. Uh, have you uh, have you ever been to a zoo? Oh yeah. Yeah. I've been to, I, I, I'm always like nervous to say whether I enjoy zoos and aquariums or not. Cause like, I don't know if that, I haven't done any research into whether they're good for the, I mean, it's captivity basically. So yeah, but, I know again, zoos are, but all the yeah, aquarium zoos are very controversial. Yeah. But some zoos do like conservation work. So mm -hmm. are they, how much are they helping versus hurting all that kind of stuff. So uh, but I do really enjoy a, a good zoo and an aquarium, if I'm being honest, especially yeah, aquariums. Yeah. yeah, like I like I, I don't want to say that I support zoos and aquariums like I like but like because just because but also like, again, you mentioned they do have a lot of these conservation efforts and educational efforts. Uh, but then like, I, I'm not going to be the one to know what, you know, the positive versus the negative and where they weigh. But yeah. it is it is nice getting to see and learn about that specific wildlife wildlife they're in captivity but you know, about those about those animals and i know when i go to the zoos like i do take a lot of time to like read like a lot of like they have like those little like boards that give you like the history and the yeah. knowledge of the animal and like and you'll have people speaking like like what these animals do when they are in the wild and how they live and how they hunt and fight and survive and right. I know that's not everybody's, you know, when they go to the zoo, they're like, oh, meerkat. And then they keep going. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that aspect is really cool of it. Like the educational aspect of it and mm -hmm. the appreciation that you get from going to a zoo and, and like understanding the animals and their needs and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I think, think that's, that's um, yeah, that's, that's definitely something that can't be overlooked is the educational and the appreciation part of it. Uh, I was talking to who someone who, is or was currently in our chat right now willow is that they they're in the they're in the uk so their high school isn't called high school but like their high school equivalent they had a farm uh and i that just made me think about like i wonder what that would do for a lot more people if they because I, I i i unfortunately i run into a lot of individuals that don't have an appreciation for life outside of humans <laughs> you know sure. like yeah. they see it like they you know they see a snake on the road and they're like i'm gonna run over it you know it, yeah, it, make, yeah. it makes me wonder if people grew up around animals, like around farms and whatnot, if they would have a better appreciation for animal life. And so I, that, I think that's a very important aspect of like, you know, I don't know if a giraffe should be locked up. I'm not going to be the one to debate that right now because I'm not knowledgeable enough. But if we can, if this will get people out here to learn from it and maybe even later on support initiatives that go to support the you know the giraffes that are out there that are wild you know right yeah yeah did you ever watch uh tiger king 
that whole thing. No. no. <laughs> I feel, I'll I never financially bad, recover from this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that all is the bad side of things. Like I, oh, I of course, that, yeah. Like, no, I would not want. Like I would never support that in a million years. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was if I knew that, lot, yeah. Of course, but if I knew if I knew my local zoo was doing stuff like that, I would never. I would want that shut down and those animals taken somewhere where they belong. You know. <laughs> yeah. There's a part where someone's arm gets like chewed off in that, in that show, um, and they're just like a staff member at one of the places. Just the idea of going to work, you're just going to work. It's a normal day, and then you walk out of work that day, and you're one less one less body part. That's just crazy to me. Um, no, thank you. Scary to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oof. Man, I I know that stuff like that happens even just like in like conservation places like over in like in Africa. Like, you know, there's a lot of, like, wildlife conversation, conver- con- conservation. <laughs> uh, very close word to conversation. Um, yeah. uh, conservation. And I know I don't like a lot of injuries that you don't necessarily hear about, but some you do happen over there, too. But it's a part of, it's a part of working with nature. <laughs> your, uh, your conservation conversation thing makes me think of, like, at work, I, I write the word underserved a lot. Underserved. But uh-huh. if I miss... That one important letter, I turn it into undeserved. Undeserved. <laughs> uh, and I, I am so scared of that every time where I'm talking about communities that are more vulnerable to like food insecurity and stuff like that. And I'm uh-huh. this undeserved community. <laughs> like I have to be very careful with that word. <laughs> that would not look good. Uh, whoever whoever's reviewing that or, or reading that, <laughs> they're, yeah. they're like, oh wow. Undeserved. Yeah, Pete. No he's, he's very he's money. very opinionated about this community. Here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, yeah, you haven't, but you haven't made that mistake though yet, right? No, but I I heard somebody. So I was at a meeting this week at a different organization, and it was like a meeting where we pulled together a lot of different nonprofits, uh, and I heard someone say the word undeserved instead of <laughs> underserved when yeah. they were meaning underserved, and it just reinforced in my head of like. I have to be really careful with that. Oh, anybody like, with dyslexia um, reading that, oh man. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I yeah. think most people, most reasonable people, would be like, I know what they meant, but yeah, there are unreasonable people in this world. <laughs> like, what do you mean scary. undeserved? It's like no, it's, yeah, it's not yeah. what I meant. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. that's not what I meant. Yeah, <sighs> use a little bit of common sense, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah. Um. I have one yeah. more, one last uh, news article here. If you want to hear it, yes, it's please. Very, it's please very do. small. Um, it's just that uh, the IRS is uh, launching a free tax filing program in twelve pilot states. That's good. Is Florida, one of them. <laughs> there was a list. Uh, let me look. I'm just tired of them knowing how much I owe, but won't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the list is um, Arizona, California, Florida, Massachusetts, Let's Nevada, go. New Hampshire, New York, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Washington State, and Wyoming. Uh, hmm. Alaska was originally included, but is no longer part of the pilot. Poor I feel Alaska. like there's not, like, yeah, I know, there's not a good description of what happened there. They were like, no, you're out. Um, you're done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's just good because, like, apparently, from what I'm reading online, so like take this with a grain of salt because I, like I'm not I'm not an expert. I'm just conveying conversations that I've I've read. I think that's but, for the whole show. When we when we're covering topics, we are not yeah. experts. Yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. just yeah. taking prior knowledge and what we read and going with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there apparently like the the government knows how much you need to file for, mm-hmm. but the H and R Block and TurboTax and stuff have lobbied so hard for that process to be done through them through a third party uh that it makes it so much harder on on just standard citizens because you have to do this like roundabout way of filing your taxes yeah you got your 1099s and your w-2s and yeah Yeah. you wouldn't have to do that if TurboTax and h&r block would fuck off essentially so (laughs) yeah (laughs) so i feel like this program is kind of a first step in getting there of establishing like a government-led program of filing your taxes uh, mm-hmm. that would potentially be easier and cheaper on on citizens and i know this is very u.s centered so of course sorry, but no, any, i i would like something viewers. like that because i've started uh 
I've started doing more work that involves 1099s, which gets a lot more complicated in terms of filing taxes. At least with a W-2, yeah. you're just kind of boop, 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 just inputting. But with like with a 1099, depending on like, and I got a bunch of different sources for these 1099s, it gets a little more like, uh, and then I need these companies to send me the 1099s and some, I haven't received some. Like, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't file my taxes last year and I haven't filed mine this year <laughs> yet, which is bad. I, IRS, I, you will get your money. Uh, <laughs> but I, like, I know they know how much I owe. Like, I know that's a thing. So I Do you wish you owe anything because mm -hmm. I did more 1099 work than I did W2 work. I'm sure mm -hmm. that I owe I, my W2 job. I made sure that they did take more taxes out so that I would end up owing less but of yeah. course, like a 1099, I don't pay the taxes until it comes filing season. So, right. so I'm sure that I do, and I've just been waiting for a letter in the mail for like, hey, you owe this much, give this this, or we're gonna charge this interest. So I, so I just know, because I know that they'll do that eventually. Either that, or they'll come and take me to jail. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I'm telling, it's so frustrating to like try to get my 1099s from these certain jobs, and so yeah. I just, I wish there was a way where it's like, hey, we know how much you made give us this or we know how much yeah. you made here you go hey this is how much we give you uh yeah because they just do a know a report <laughs> at the end of the year yeah yeah, yeah. Like, we're gonna just send you a check you don't even have to file like okay thanks for you know these you mm -hmm. know this kind of and tax i guess if you're doing 1099s that wouldn't be possible but for like w2 anybody just doing a w2 yeah and they've paid over their amount in taxes and they need a, a refund just send the check don't even like make me file anything if you know how much it's going to be and, and even with the 1099s like they still know that i made that money because of everything that's tied to my social security and the banks and everything like they still know that i've received that money i'm not laundering yeah. it so they you know they know that i have that that i got that money yeah and and I, I I think there should be a period where if you want to do like your whole uh, deductibles and your tax write offs, you, there's a period to do that. But besides that, I don't want to have to do the whole W two W two thing. And like you guys know how much you're gonna send me. And so yeah. if I, if I don't feel like doing the whole deductible thing, which again when I'm on TurboTax, I usually just skip all that because I don't have any deductibles. I don't have any tax write offs to add. So I, I'm not yeah. fall. I don't fall under a specific bracket to be getting this deductible and whatever, or you know. So I don't even deductible is probably the wrong word, but uh, I don't know what these words mean if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but like I'm not doing anything special. I'm just telling you how much I made and how much I paid you, which you already know. <laughs> so that is yeah. good to hear. And if that's in Florida. I can't wait to utilize that. <laughs> of the direct file. Uh, pilot is this something that's already like it's like so it's it's already been launched in these states it's, it's I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, now I'm fully have, open in, in I'm 12 pilot states i'm gonna have to write this down since florida was it called direct file is that what you said <laughs> yeah so yeah and they're hoping that they get at least 100,000 people utilizing it they'll get me they'll get me yeah. <laughs> it says it focuses on simple tax situations they put that in quotes yeah Oh, and there is a Spanish language version that opens, uh, when was this published? March 12th. So it should be already be open. Nice. For Spanish speaking. Inclusivity devices. is important. Yeah. Especially when it comes to government stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. Cause, cause unfortunately it is very important <laughs> that you do it. So <laughs> you don't want, you don't want any, uh, any restrictions, especially when it comes to language. So yeah, yeah. I agree. I remember, uh, when I was a manager at Starbucks, I had two employees that didn't understand the rhetoric on their, I guess it's your W-4 that you file at when you first start a job so they know how much taxes you want taken out. Yeah. And so I, I think they ended up clicking where, like, they don't want any taxes taken out, but that's not what they wanted. So then once they did file their W-2, it, it came out like, you owe the you owe the IRS $2,000. And they're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like these poor like, high these poor high schoolers fresh fresh out of school or still in school did not know nothing about that <laughs> yeah well it's it's so it's so confusing even like reading the instructions on the w4 they they're like oh if you have x amount of like exceptions or, or dependents blah 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 tax exceptions that's what i was thinking of instead of deductibles yeah and, and they don't describe what it is so you're just like well fucking i guess good luck to me on guessing on assuming what these terms mean and that's assuming you have a parent that can maybe help you, but then they need to know that, the, you know, I know a lot of parents that don't 
necessarily understand any of this. It's like, oh, I just put that last year. It's like, oh, <laughs> that you sound confident. <laughs> yeah. I've filled out a lot of those for a lot of different jobs, and it never fails. Every time I start a new job, I shit my pants a little bit sitting there trying to figure out. Trying do I to claim, do I claim myself? Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the process is far from simple. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's good to hear. Hopefully that's something that like turns out to be a working and beneficial thing, because that's something that I know that I personally would benefit from, and I know a lot of people would benefit from it, so yeah yeah i think so too hopefully uh because yeah. i used to be like turbo is that. the is the best because they make the process so simple but it comes to find out no they don't <laughs> no <Yeah>. they're not <laughs> turbo tax is what i use and they're such little scumbags about about how they do it because they they're like oh this is the free version and you fill it out and they're like just kidding it was like actually like 60 dollars. yeah and then they have a secret actually free version uh, that you have to find in some sideways way and like click a specific link for. I have managed to find it every time, but it is, you are right. It is. And they're constantly like every other page trying to get you to, to pay for something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like, get a, get a more in-depth look into your tax return, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Or, you know, for $5, you can have a tax expert, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's like, bro, I'm already getting money taken away from me. Could you just? Yeah, yeah. They're gonna <laughs> I don't look want... at it and be like, actually, you owe more. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want anybody to look at it any closer. Just send me my money. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so, okay, well, that is that is good news. Personally, I I find that to be good news, and I hope I hope it works out. Uh, they they will have a I'm not gonna say customer because you said free, but they will have a a user out of me. Yeah. I wrote it down, so I will be looking into that. <laughs> well, I hope that doesn't somehow screw you over. I hope I didn't give you like a bad advice. I don't know anything else about this other than the article that I read, so I assume no responsibility for anybody. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm like, already losing money, so I just, <laughs> <laughs> it can't get worse than that. <laughs> uh, but heck yeah, thank you, thank you for sharing that. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, I think I do have another article, but I think we're gonna end it there. And okay. I will carry I'll carry this article over into my next week's show just because I have to use the bathroom so bad and we're we've already okay. went over the two hour mark, which I'm perfectly fine with. This has been wonderful. Pete, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, of course. I'm thank happy to be I was happy so to be so much for this. Of course, yeah. No, I uh, I I I knew you I knew you'd be perfect for the show. Just like just for the little bit that I've gotten to talk and interact with you and I've watched I've watched the streams that you and Matt are in and I'm just, I'm just like, you know, Pete, Pete would be perfect for this. And I'm, and I'm glad, uh, not to go too much into like your work, but you shared with me that little, the little bit that, that you've done, uh, what it came to like the news thing for your job or whatever, you know, what I'm talking about the positivity thing. Oh, about having like a new, new staff member. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And how you were like sharing like positive, you know, things again. Not, oh not yes. to get... yeah, yeah. 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 And so uh, it just, it made me really excited, company. more excited to have you on. Because uh, well, you, you, you. You, you see the light, uh, and that yeah, makes, so yeah. that, that makes me that makes me excited. So, so yeah, yeah, I was well, I was inspired, uh, and I, I don't know necessarily that they've they have noticed that that is is on there and available for them, but uh, it's got to count somewhere. It, yeah, hopefully it provides some. Maybe they'll find it one day when they really need it. Yeah, yeah, and even then, you know, uh, I think it, it also just reflects on you, you know, in a in a good way. And, and, may, and maybe as you're looking for, you know, these things or, you know, you, as you're doing it, it's probably benefiting you in a way that you might not even be thinking about, you know, it's nice. e even, yeah. even though you're doing it for them, I'm sure it's benefiting you in maybe in a conscious way or a conscious way. Very quick context. I, I won't keep, I won't, you know, over explain this, but just essentially like I created a space for my new team member uh, who mentioned in, in their interview that they uh, are, I mean, the, not, they just don't like a lot of negativity necessarily. Mm -hmm. things can get really busy at our work so i just put a space where there are positive article links there um yeah. very i mean not like a, a huge thing huge effort and a little bit of selfishness on my part just because it's nice to carve out time during the week to try and find those articles so i would call that selfish a benefit so. it's, for, a, it's a good selfishness i guess yeah a mutual yeah. a mutual uh benefit there yeah um, but, yeah yeah and totally inspired by uh by by your show here i just did not have that that thought until i was watching so well Thank you. i i it's for creating this positive uh 
face. Of course, of course. And I, I know in certain aspects of today's show, <laughs> we might have gotten to a couple topics that were a little a little less than... Uh, yeah, sorry the, about the, that. The, no, but I, I had a good time talking about them, though. It was fun. I had, yeah. I had, so, I had so much fun having you on here. Uh, and I look forward to having you on again one day. So great. Yeah, I had a so, good time doing it. Of course. Yes. And so, uh, we are ending the show, but to anybody who is listening, uh, there is going to be, we're hosting this live, but of course there will be a video version on YouTube as well as, uh, you can listen to us on Spotify, uh, Apple podcast and anywhere that you might get your podcast, uh, Deezer, <laughs> Anywhere that you get your that you may listen to your podcast, you can find us there. Uh, and if you join the Savvy Society, you too can put in news articles and or pleasant moments throughout your week that uh, I and my guest on the show will read out. So definitely do that, Pete. One last time, thank you so much uh, for for being on. Uh, it was it was wonderful. So, so thank, thank you for you. having me. Yeah, it was a great time. And, uh, thanks for letting me. Uh, yap for two hours <laughs> of course of okay. course <laughs> thank you for letting me do the same uh if you want to if you want to stay in the call uh i'm just gonna i'm just gonna end things out here really quick but okay. if you just want to stay in the call for a moment yeah uh so again everybody thank you for being here so much uh and i will uh i will i'll see you in the next one uh I might be going live later i'm not 100 percent, but yeah have a good one and i'll see you later Bye.